ipmnation.com. Gives a mm mm. Who gives a damn? Hey, everybody, welcome. It's that time again. Matt Connerton Unleashed. We are live on WMNH 95.3 FM, emanating from glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97, if you're in Manchester, streaming at WMNHradio.org. And on Facebook, on the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page, it is Tuesday, May 7th, 2019. And we're diving right in because we have a a couple of VIPs here. Of course, uh, over there on the couch is uh, a gentleman uh, you might be familiar with if you're a regular listener of the station. He does the morning show, Mr. Peter White. How are you, sir? Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's wonderful to see you here. In the, there's probably people who think that you only exist in the morning. You <laughs> well, know? maybe. Maybe. Because, you know, I, once in a great while, I will come on uh, on the show in the afternoon with you. Yes. Yes. And, of course, uh, over at the news desk, we have the man, the myth, the legend, the effervescent oh Easy G. Uh, only here for a little while. Oh. Easy G. Easy G. Yeah. We also have, of course, our uh, regular cast members, as our family here has been growing. Uh, oh. Joining us here in the studio, as always, is the ghost of John McCain. I'm John McCain. Yes, we have uh, virtual Dave Ridley. I'm here. And, of course, uh, the, our newest addition uh, to the cast, uh, Virtual John Hopwood is here as well. What a jackass. And so uh, we have a full house here today. So, all right, very good. Yes, <laughs> very good. Easy. Now, what are you doing this now for? Yes, easy. G, While we uh, get your 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 like really, my lips are dry. Yeah, get right up on that mic, easy. G. What are you? Oh, my lips are dry. What? Oh, I thought maybe that was uh, herpesin. Maybe you had uh, some mouth herpes no. going on. Hey, I got a quick question for you, uh, Peter. Peter, White. I definitely. Uh, I have herpes. I was talking up. <laughs> I was talking up my the uh, the. You were going to show up today, but you did it. And said, well, I didn't hey, say. Uh, I didn't commit to it. Yeah, I know. I didn't commit. I went to. I actually went to Pappy's. Oh, that's fine. I was over at Pappy's Pizza. Does that make you? How does that make you feel? That's fine. Yeah, you need business too. So, anyways, I was talking. I was talking to the to my boss Nicole. She goes, "Hey, uh, she says my other half met you the other day. Met you, Peter White. This guy named Dave. He was the cobbler for the uh, Seas of Hope. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I met him. He met me the other day. Yeah." He was shining shoes for everybody. Yeah, that's his job. Right. So well, shout out to Dave from, from Ridden's Shoes Repair on Kelly Street. Well, doesn't a cobbler do shoe repair? Well, he was asked to help out for the Seeds of Hope. Because there's a difference between doing shoe repair and, and shining shoes. Well, the, that's uh, what he was. He, I think he was there, though, to specifically shine the shoes. Oh, he I see. He was friends with uh, Christy Cantor. Who, yes. who, who, who isn't friends with Christy Well, here's Cantor. the thing. I'm not. I've never met her. How dare you? The, the, the entire community came together for that Seeds of Hope fashion show. That's what it was, and that's how it works. I'll fix that. I'll fix that. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I did that because uh, Abby was over here today. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. Wow. Very good. Yeah. So, so yeah, that that's the reason, and and you saw it firsthand because Eric uh, went. We all kind of you got you sat with the whole crowd. Yeah, yeah, and Eric, I'm going to tell you, you know, and I'm not even giving you a hard time. You look like such a nice. Uh, oh, Mike told me to dress up. So you 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 were dressed up. You were uh, you looked very good on yeah. uh, on Friday night. And then I left my Uncle Al sweater there. Oh, yeah, oh he, no! He, yeah, he lost Uncle Al's sweater. Oh it's no! Gone. Really? Gone. They haven't called me down two days, so it's gone. Really? I'll go back and check. Well, who is Uncle Al's? Is this an uncle that passed away? Yeah, my, yeah. Do you he want me to my tell sweater you? Like twenty years ago. Do you he, want, want me to tell you the story? Because I, I know this is something <laughs> that I know I know a lot I know, about. It's awful. Well, I, I just is this going to make us all cry? I mean, it sounds yeah. very sad. I mean, losing well, Uncle the, Al's uh, sweater. I here mean, it I, is. <laughs> I don't. We're all going to be weeping openly. Here it is. Yes. The the uh, Uncle Al's sweater uh, when Eric was married. Okay, this was his wife's Uncle Al's. Oh. And Uncle Al is no longer with us. Right. And Eric ended up with the sweater. Okay. This is yeah. over 20 years ago. Oh, oh. Well, 20 years ago now, yeah. I've been right. Oh, I see. Years. Yes. It's never been washed. It still smells like Uncle no, Al. No, I put it through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it was my favorite sweater, though. So we're on the lookout. Oh, yeah. Now, well, now he's going to the Brooklyn Mike sweater. 
Right. Yeah, but I really need sweater now. It's 70 degrees. So hopefully sweater right. days are old for a long time. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Little Weezer for you there. You you know, like, do you like Weezer? I can't say I do. Really? I Why do you like that smooth jazz? We do love the smooth jazz. <laughs> this is um, this is undone, uh, the sweater song, Eric. Did you ever listen to this while sitting around uh, wearing Uncle Al's sweater, thinking about your ex-wife? No, I really don't think about it. I'll, I'll tell you. Anybody out there that has a, a mar- I would say a maroon, would you say it? Or, yeah. Or is it magenta? Okay, maroon, okay yeah. so a maroon cardigan sweater, long sleeve, so we could replace Eric's long lost Uncle Al sweater. It's never going to be Uncle Al's sweater. Right. But you know yeah. what? It, can, it, it can, You can have new memories with your new sweater. Yeah, we'll call it'll never it, be the same. We'll call it the uh, WMNH Easy G <laughs> sweater. But is there a way to replicate the smell somehow of Uncle Al? No, because not. if you can't replicate the smell, then what's even the point? Yeah. Right. Just, yeah. leave, just go leave it at the senior just center for a couple days. Yeah, It'll be fine. Go. Well, that's a good idea. Or better yet, do you know where Uncle Al is buried? I think he's buried somewhere in Concord. I got a shovel in the Jeep. Let's go after the show. We'll get uh, this done. Oh, my God. Do you want to dig up Uncle Al? We're going to no. dig him up. We're going to no, dig him up. We're going to get the sweater, the new sweater. We'll oh, dig him yeah. up. And we'll rub uh, the sweater on his uh, skeleton. What do you think he looks like now, he's <laughs> I bet he's lost some weight. Not much right. to him, I guess. <laughs> right. right. Not he much died to him. a while back. Yes. He's probably decomposed. So let's talk about a live fella. I just saw John Clayton over a market basket. John Clayton is, in fact, alive, from what I understand. Yeah, yes. Yeah, he's at the basket. Oh, oh wow. Did. The basket. Yep. That's what the cool kids call it. Right. So John Clayton's out there shopping right now. No, he's all done. Oh, he was in line? Was like a half an hour ago. I said hi. Now, what did John have in his cart? <laughs> uh, he bought some food, and I saw him come back. And I, I know, but did you him. look at what he was eating? You can uh, tell a lot. It, but he, there... he came back because he, he forgot his contact. Uh, he probably some contact. Well, let me ask you this. Did he have any, uh, was there any, was, was there beer in his uh, basket? Uh, I don't remember. He didn't Ooh. have a basket. He just had a couple items, and then I saw him go to his car. He said, oh, crap, I forgot something. His, his wife, his, his wife probably sent him on his way home from work, too. You know, because he's right, hey, you're right there. <laughs> the Mill Yard Museum is right there. Oh, yeah. Can you stop by the basket? And pick up whatever we're having for dinner tonight. He forgot his uh, box of contacts that he buys at the basket. I guess that's that's why I've never been married. Right, because of that. I don't want to have to be sent to the basket. You right. know what I mean? So anyway, I said, I'm taking the bus back. And the, the Is this a big story you said you were no. going to tell on the air? Yes. Yeah, so oh, I'm this better the, be good. Oh, it's a good one. I'm taking the bus back <laughs> from the basket, the free one. Yes. And his, his, his character, this funny guy that uh, drives the bus, I can't remember his name, but I call him Mr. Bus Driver. Mr. Bus Driver. And he says, look over there. That's dehumanizing. And, and why did I do it at Veterans Park? This guy dropped his pants. What? what? I'm confused. He says, look over there, and I was stupid enough to look over there. Some guy, or it was a girl, I don't remember who it was, but I saw the person's rump at Veterans oh. Park, and the guy, the bus driver says, welcome to Manchester. Right. So why'd I look? I don't know. But if someone tells you to look, you just look, I guess. And then did you go back to the basket and get a rump roast? No, I oh, didn't. Wow. I is, couldn't believe it. Somebody dropped, actually dropped their pants in public. Is that your entire story, Eric? That was the story I was well, saving for the radio. Not though. to be picky, but it's a little more of an anecdote, to be honest with you. But we'll give you an air horn anyway. <laughs> I know how much you enjoy the air horn. I didn't need to see that. So why'd I look? I don't know. Right. Well, you looked because someone said, look. I right, mean, the you, bus driver did. Right. He's well, the, he's an antagonizing. Guy. You 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 trusted the bus driver. I, I think the moral of the story is uh, never trust a bus driver. Clearly, uh, hello to uh, Jenny who joins us in the Facebook live chat as well as Kevin Morrissey, Heidi Hamer. Heidi says, "Well, is it morning or afternoon?" Peter and Eric and Matt with two uh, question marks. And she said, "I'm glad I'm not the only one dazed and confused." Uh, hello to uh, Christian Cunard in the Facebook live chat and. Uh, Rhonda Ostrowitz Favero, who says beef jerky. Is that your friend Rhonda Ease? No, it's another Rhonda. She doesn't oh. listen to the station. Peter White was fixing the cameras. If you're watching online, that's what all that was about. Yes, I saw they talked about it enough, but she doesn't seem to be interested. So. Talked about what enough? What are you talking about, Eric? About her incident with the uh, with the um, case of downtown. With, where are my tickets? I don't know what you're talking about. Do you have another story for us? Another anecdote? No, it's an old story about me and well, you, when, when I called up the show and Peter Weiss died. I love old stories. Peter Weiss' grandmother had just died the day before, apparently, and she was 100 years old, and I called oh, up. Thanks for bringing it up, Ease. I'm sorry about that, but rest in peace. I, was, I called up Vega for uh, tickets for Ronda. For the taste of downtown. and the. Uh, I certainly have talked about it enough over the years, so. 
But she doesn't seem too interested about it. She just kind of chuckles. Ha ha. Who, who didn't seem too interested? About listening to the radio. Who, Rhonda? Right. Your friend, Rhonda, not the Rhonda. Not the Rhonda. Right. Line from. Some people right. just not into the radio, I guess, though. So. Either you're not, you are or you're not. How can you not be into the radio? Yeah. I don't know. It seems like my boss, Nicole's the other half, Jack, is into the radio. I mean, mm. no, sorry, Dave. Oh, Dave. I but hate she's, being But bored. she's not, though. Mm. Right. Right. Dave loves radio. Right, so they better get him to come on the radio instead of her. Well, it's all right. We, we're getting crowded over here. Uh, Mike Gonzalez in the Facebook live chat <laughs> says, is Eric lying again? Yeah, Are you right. lying, Eric? Are you a big liar? No, there was just a white lie. Earlier. No, he lied. No, he, he lied recently. <laughs> and said, hurry. That was just a white lie. No, he said, "Oh no, I was home all day fixing my stuff." And then, yeah. uh, oh yes. And I, I think it was Bill Burke in the, our fa- our Facebook live yeah. room <laughs> said, "I saw Easy over uh, over by uh, the Red Barn, the Red Barn mm-hmm. breakfast place. He was having breakfast with somebody." Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was kind of a true, I guess. That, but, was, that was just a white lie. I know, but you shouldn't, you know, just say, hey, I, I had other things to do. I went to breakfast. But does it surprise you? I mean, he won't even greet you in public if he sees you. No, he's gotten much better. Oh, has uh, he? Oh, good. I haven't seen you in public. Oh, yeah, I did see you in public well, the other day. To, you know, it's hard for me oh, to yeah, go the, out. I, I saw you at the, um, the uh, taco <laughs> tour. I yelled across the street with my big mouth. Well, see, I have to, you know, me walking down the street. You know, I have to keep a low profile. That's true. Otherwise, people crowd me. Yes. Yeah, but you were not keeping a low profile when you were in the limo. Right. I was keeping a low profile. During the uh, taco tour, yes. Oh, hello to uh, Chris Rose, who joins us online. Chris Rose. One of the one of the good ones. One of the... One of, one of, what do you mean by that? I, I think Chris is great. Oh, okay. Like he's a good friend of mine. I, I thought you meant something else. No. Oh, no. one of the good ones, as in one oh, of the good yeah. friends, I like compared a, to Easy G. I another, he's like, yeah. I got another no, funny story. Remember oh, that time boy. Me, me Easy. and Gorman had that fake fight on the radio? <laughs> the fake fight? I think that was pretty real. I think Mr. He Gorman. He said he'd give me a hug next time he sees me. I think well, uh, I finally got a Ryan Gorman, no, Gorman hug on can, Monday. Gorman gets so mad at you. Is that Ryan Gorman? I got a hug on Monday. Yeah, actually, what kind of hug was it? Was it like a bro it was a hug? More, it was more or less like a TV hug. Because whenever I yeah. see Gorman, he gives me a warm embrace, and he kind of rubs my back a little right. bit. And he'll right. usually, it wasn't one of those. It was like a TV hug. He'll usually whisper something into my ear, like, he it's great it, to yeah. see you, or kind something starts, like that. starts up on the top of the back and goes down towards your waist. The only right. problem is yes. he was smoking cigarettes. And it was kind of a cigarette hug. So okay, so there was gross. no, there was no waste. It was and, a real smelly, smoky yeah, it was kind of a cigarette gross hug. hug. No, well, wow. And then Polly Corby got got uh, jealous. He said, "I want a, a Ryan Gorman hug," and he told Peter to make it happen. Right. <laughs> Well, well Polly, Polly C and Ryan have a history together, but they've never apparently they've never actually met. Is that true? No, Is that what Paul no, was telling I, me? Paul was telling me they've never actually no, met they, in person oh, after no. all this time. Oh, I think they've seen each other. Really? I might have misunderstood. Maybe. Because I, I, was, I was very surprised when well, Paul you know said what? that to me. Well, you know what? The last TV show we had, uh, they were both there. Oh, maybe, that's true. Maybe, yeah, you're maybe right. They, maybe they didn't talk to each other, but... Uh, no, you're right, though. Because they... you remember the old battles back oh, in the old days? vividly. That was great stuff. Oh, that was great the stuff. The old battles? Oh, oh yeah. yes. All these, all these guys on the radio now, like uh, Matt here, and we were all doing uh, public access television. We all had television shows, but... Uh, uh, Matt arranged to have us all go down. We all did shows together. So Paul did this thing called Retro Spectrum Radio, and we had Manstradam. And all of a sudden, you know, we were <laughs> we were very friendly at first because mm-hmm. we're all excited that we are all interested in the same type of thing, and we like radio, oh, right. we like to talk. And then things took a turn for the worst, and I believe it started with, uh, I believe it started with, uh, Paul and Ryan. There was an unreturned phone call, I believe. And 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 yeah, and then yeah. it all I can't started. believe Ryan would cause any problems. I know, it's shocking. It, it really uh it truly is. Yeah, I know. He's such a docile creature. Right, actually, I'm surprised too cuz Paul is the easiest guy to get along with. You know that. <laughs> yes, another uh docile creature. Right, yes, right. yes. <laughs> Except one time, except one time he stopped on Lenny's toes. One time, and Lenny got a little angry. I didn't even know that. Oh my goodness! Yeah, during the show one time, Lenny said, "Hey, can I speak, Paul?" Oh, that's right. That, uh, oh, I do remember one that. One time, that yeah. Lenny that, spoke that's, up. Uh, that's on there somewhere. That's uh, oh wow. Yeah, not often Lenny spoke. It, it, often, it, it, but... It's actually quick too. I could oh. probably find it. It's in. Uh, Let me see if it's in PW four. I think PW four. Lenny uh, didn't Under often radio speak up, ready. but that time oh. he did. Morning show four. No, not on the not on the side, not on the side uh, one. I'm talking about in the. Uh, oh, oh, I I think I see what you mean. Right, you go into radio ready, and then you'll see PW like four. 
and it'll say Lenny. It'll say Lenny oh. on it. Oh, wait, radio ready. But you're right. Oh. I, I remember that day now. But see, that was funny. Yeah, it was. It was funny, not because I. It was. It was just like Paul was laughing so hard, and Lenny had wanted to get something out. And oh, here we go. I think I found it. Well, let's let's uh let's take a listen to see what happened. Yes. Can I give right. you my answer, Peter? You can give your answer right, right now. Here, here we go. Richard Dawson. Well, no, no. Most of the family feud. That's wrong. Hey, Paul, put a, just a minute. Hold the phone. Paul. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Did you, Paul, hold, you, the phone hold the phone. Hold the phone. Okay. Host of family feud, Richard Dawson. That's right. 1976 to 1985. Ray Cohn. Need, need a cup of coffee, Paul? Okay, Paul, I'm trying to t- knock it off, Paul. Paul, knock it off, Paul. Paul, can't you give some more time to speak? Paul, lock it off for a minute, will you? Ray Cohen, hey, 1988 to 1989. Hey, I'm trying to talk. Please, hold on. Hold on. I, I love you, Liz. I love, I love America, dude. <laughs> That's the best part of the thing. I love America, dude. <laughs> yeah, he was, he, was, he was not too happy with uh, Paul E.C., the place to be right there at that moment. No, but it was such great radio. That's was, what we're though. saying. It was. I just want to hear that part again. Hold I, I love your lips. I love I love America, dude. I think that's nice. I think we should all love America. I, I yeah. love America. Yeah, but he did kind of. It seemed to me that he was implying that uh, Paul Cormier does not love America. He well, made. I, I think. Know. I think he was just want, wanted to get what he said out because we had asked him a question and Len had looked it up. Yeah, and it right. obviously was about Richard Dawson. Right. Because we were playing Family Feud back then. Yeah. No longer with us. I well, well, that's where we were getting ready. We were practicing for our big uh, uh, event, Clayton versus Clayton. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Richard Dawson, can you imagine how much trouble he'd be in today in the Me Too era? Oh, my God. Oh, gee. I mean, he was practically making out with the female contestants oh, on Family my God. Feud. Yeah. Well, right. guys, yes. when I'm researching match game questions for uh, for the show, yes. I, I see clips of the match game. And obviously, Richard Dawson you know, was on that show for many years. Uh, in the 70s, early 70s, mid 70s, right before Family Feud became, you know, a big hit. Um, and he was always like, you know, shirt was unbuttoned. He was a, he oh, was, yeah. He was a swinger. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A Hollywood a, swinger. He was a womanizer, that's for sure. Uh, Mike Gonzalez. Well, you got to get in the microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you are. We can't hear you. Here. He was a womanizer, yeah, definitely. <laughs> How do you know he was a womanizer? He, maybe maybe uh, he just. He's. He was just a little on the He wild didn't make side. out with people. He just gave him a little peck on the lips. Well, yeah. I think that Britney Spears song is about him. Really? I think so, yeah. Which, which it's about, one? about Richard Dawson. Womanizer. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mike Gonzalez says uh, that you told the rump story about Murphy's on St. Patrick's Day. I did. Oh, yeah. There were some drunk ladies yeah, slapping each other's rump that day. Oh, my God. Okay, so there's different versions of the rump story. Yeah. Okay, so... So that's really? a completely different story then, because well, Mike... it, it was a show on, uh, I mean, a, a play that called Grease at the Palace Theater. Grease is about, the word is the word that you heard. It's got groove. About, it's got they meaning. They talk about slapping each other's rump on that show too. Uh, in the movie Grease, they talk about slapping yeah, the, each other's the, rump. The, yeah, the, or the play. The girl, the girl says, "You can slap my rump anytime." So is that Grease One or Grease Two? One. Because I like Grease Two much better than Grease One. Yeah, we yes. know that. I'm a big fan of that. Grease 2, Electric Boogaloo, I think is the full well, title. Well, no, but but that's I see what you're doing. Grease there. 2, oh, right. Grease two <laughs> is not as good as Grease 1. No, it definitely it never is. is. It, no, this one was. In my opinion. I know. In my opinion, how could you not like it? Uh, I did who, Who's that guy? <laughs> he came out of the darkness oh, in God. the middle of the night. I don't even. Re- I haven't seen Grease two since I was you a kid. You watched Grease two, but I've seen Grease two. Yeah, it's great. Michelle Pfeiffer. Yes. Maxwell Caulfield. Yes. Yes. It's Michael. But what I'm curious about is this. Um, I, I think Mike Gonzalez has made an accusation. I think he's accusing you of recycling a story, Easy J. Oh. How do you uh, How do you uh, want to address well, what that? What do you mean recycling a story? Well, because he, he says you told the Rump story uh, in a different context on a different day. Oh well, maybe sometimes I do that. Yeah. <gasps> Why something wrong with that? Well, it isn't exactly uh, honest uh, to do that. Well, what do you mean? To recycle a story and make it different? Recycle a story about what? About the rump. You're talking about Greece? No. Uh, Mike Gonzalez is saying uh, is talking about you. You you've used the uh, rump story before. In a different uh, scenario. 
Uh, I think is what he's suggesting. I, I don't remember. I don't, oh. Mike, sorry. feel free to call in. Uh, 603-250-6007. Yeah, my memory. We can get to the bottom of this. Uh, Danny Nickerson uh, joins us in the Facebook live chat. Angela Philbrook uh, says, Grease 1 is better. Sorry. Well, I think most people would say that. Peter White had to leave the room. He appears to have gotten an urgent phone call. Do you yeah. know anything about what that might be about, uh, EZG? It could be a, a significant other, maybe Stephanie. Oh, my goodness, yes. I hope everything I is all right. I did meet her the other day. Very, very nice lady. Oh, yes. Have well, you met her? I have not met her, but uh, I'm sure she is lovely uh, to uh, you know to have uh, clinched the affections of our very own Peter White of yeah. the morning show. I've never met her before, so I can't say that no more. Oh, right. You can't say what no more. That I've never met her. Oh, that's true, yes. It's always fun to meet new people. Right, right. Have apparently, you met- apparently, I've, I had met Peter White's mom before, but she says I've seen you before. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I have to, I have to agree with her, I guess. I guess so. Yeah, then. I know, Abigail Come say my speaks, face. Oh. Abigail always speaks highly of her grandmother. And that well, she should. well, of course, yes, yes, of course. Um, so, how are you feeling, Easy G? Is everything all right, Peter White uh, of the Morning Show? I hope. Uh, yes. All right. Very good. Very good. I'm a very busy guy, man. You are. You it are. Was, it was funny when I saw your mother the other day at the Seeds of Hope. Yeah. She says, I've seen you before. I don't remember. Right. She sees you on TV every day, every <laughs> morning. Yeah, but I don't know if I've ever seen her live, though. Right. Really? Oh, maybe you have. I, I did. I, she says I did, so I don't want to argue with her. So I said, oh, okay. What? You wanted to start an argument with my mother? I didn't. Though, you have so a beef? I, I disagree. You have a beef with no, my I mom? No, I didn't. I don't have a beef no, with her. No, this, this is something that's upsetting me. Y'all no, got I, beef. I don't have a beef with her. I just, I just, I just agree with her because I said uh, I don't want to argue with her. Y'all is beefing. So what did you think of my mom? Very nice. Right. It was funny. You know, you know what I told her? I said, I know your, your son's going out there. I hope we don't embarrass the family. Right. You know what she said? <laughs> you know what she said? She's yeah. going to laugh. She says, nothing could ever embarrass me. That's right. I've been, yeah. Wow. She's been with me for 48 years. I so, guess you see the good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> oh, she, I, I, she has. Same, so, same with my mother, right? Right. So you've already squashed the beef? You're not beefing with uh, Peter White's mother? This is just our regular relationship. Oh, you know, okay. we're, we're the best of friends. I thought y'all was we beefing. Just, oh, no. We're not beefing. We, we can make up a story if you want. Right. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. The, M. Sizzle will have to get involved. How's the, oh. how's the uh, king of all farts? Ooh. I don't know. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, you're going to see him tomorrow. Yeah, I'll see a lot of them. I'm going to see him on Wednesday. I'm going to see him on Friday. We see the Avengers, and then my mother wants us to cook some food on on Sunday for. I Mother's thought you Day. were going to T Bones. Uh, they put that on the on the back burner. My mother wants a home cooked meal. Instead. A home cooked meal on Gagnon Mountain. That's right. So <laughs> she gets what she wants. She's the mother. It's Mother's Day. So. R- that's right. I don't um, want to argue with. Are her. you a mother lover? I do want to go to T Bones. Are you? A, says, are you a mother lover? That's a little personal. I believe so. Okay. Good. I know where oh, I know where butter is. Bra- <laughs> I'm the biggest right. mother lover you'll ever you'll ever see. I know why Brett is, uh, is uh, buttered. Wait a second. Angela Philbrook in the Facebook live chat says, I finally met Easy G. Is Angela Philbrook your mother? Yes. <laughs> yes, she is. Oh, I met okay. her, I met I her at the taco tour for one minute, and I sat well, with her. Let me say something about Angela, and uh, yes. I want to thank uh, Nick Willard for, uh, he had a contest that Friday morning. We were highlighting the Seeds of Hope before the event, and he said, if anyone comes to the door and mentions... Uh, uh, the morning show. I will. I will buy your what you. I will buy you a ticket in. And then Angela was there. Oh, I got Nick. Boom, she's in. Oh, so she had a great night. I Very hope. nice. I hope you had a great night, Angela. It was great to see you there. Thank you. I think Lisa took advantage of that, and then she got thrown out. Right. She, I see. I didn't see any of that. She got escorted out. That was not good. Ooh, careful. She doesn't always appreciate when you talk about her on the radio. I don't think she knows that I'm on that four o'clock show sometimes. No, oh. I know, but I think people know your voice by now. Yes. I, well, she was being a little obnoxious, unfortunately. <gasps> so they asked her to leave. Oh, well, y'all, y'all got beef with Lisa. I don't have a beef with her, but it was kind of her own fault. Y'all are beefing. Well, I know. I know. Angela was kind of nervous about. It. She, that's your friend over there. She didn't, even, she didn't even see me the whole time she was there. Did you know? You didn't, didn't know about any of this? Oh no, I knew about it because I oh. saw her. Lisa was a. Uh, we were very moved by some of the the people up on stage. Oh, which is fine. But Did she, she cry? Just, she was just too obnoxious. <laughs> Right, she was. Unfortunately, yeah. You know, she's she's a loud person anyway. Right, I can she be loud a, too. I can be loud too. Can you be loud though? Oh yeah, yeah I could be loud. as loud as she we- didn't even recognize. Ease looked so good that night. Really, he, he didn't looked so me, good. No. She didn't even recognize no. him because he debuted his new haircut, which is a fine. Uh, we would call that a. That's more you, like a. What do you, looks you like you, well, it looks cut. like you shaved your head. I basically, did. yeah. Yeah, See, I think she didn't look too happy when she was leaving. So I felt kind of bad. I think you should let your hair grow long. 
No, I don't like it. How did she even get in? So somebody bought her a ticket? Uh, I think she took advantage of that Nick Willer offer. Oh. I know she don't have $50. Oh. Well, I know, but Nick didn't buy her a ticket. Well, yeah, that's... Uh, how is she sure? Well, I don't in? know, but she didn't get in. With, that's what I'm curious that about. Was a well, one, that was a one-ticket thing. And oh, Angela, maybe she snuck in then. That's what, <gasps> I, that's what I'm thinking. Oh. So you are making well, then an then accusation. She, then, then if, well, if she snuck in, then that's why she was asked to leave. Oh, okay. Oh. oh, I didn't know there was just a one-time offer. Maybe she told someone. Oh, yeah, a fun, he wasn't uh, buying. I mean, they're fifty bucks. He yeah. wasn't buying oh, oh, everybody right. well, a that, damn that, ticket. The story's making sense to me now that she snuck in. Then, right? Oh. Unfortunately, so you're accusing her of sneaking in. I'm not accusing you're her of anything, but it, it, really, the you're accusing found out about Lee, it. You just said she snuck in. Well, if the security found out about it, then what if what if she actually bought her uh, ticket and you just smeared her good name? We You're don't even know the, what really happened. Yeah, we, I, don't, I don't know what happened. But do, it, do you want to take a moment to apologize to Lisa? Uh, yeah, if, if she's listening, I'm sorry. Unless you all are beefing. I don't know. Whatever, whatever <clears throat> happened, it wasn't a good scene, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, sounds to me like y'all got beef. No, I don't have any beef with her. Mm. A little bit of beef. Mm. Y'all beef. ought to team up with them. You're not, even, you're not even easy G today. You're beefy G. That's right. Uh, yeah, beefy G. Well, we all got issues to work on. God knows I got my own. Everybody's favorite. <laughs> huh? You know what? I've worked out all my issues, and I'm fine. I have, too. I'm pretty no, much... No, no, uh, everybody has issues they need to work on. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but close. Some, right. have, some yeah. have more than others, unfortunately. So yeah. Leave it at that. Right. Now, how is your uh, feet? How Awful. is your feet and your legs? Awful. Oh. He's having a hard time. He's having a hard time walking. Oh. Yeah. Might be time to do the uh, amputation. No, is it getting worse, though? I mean, oh, do you need still, to... still the same. I know, but do you, are you are you checking on it? Are you is a doctor looking at it? Oh yeah, we got to go physical therapy uh, tomorrow and Friday. All right, and how do you get rid of that? Well, the, the way to get rid of it is you got to go physical therapy next. In the following week, I got to get my one of my legs bandaged for three days, and then eventually go on to the next leg, and that's going to get this the, the uh, swelling down. And then I got to wear once I get the swelling down, I got to wear those compressive uh, stockings for the rest of my life. For the rest of your life? Yep. Wow. Because that uh, is a good chance to come back. Oh, now you have to wear those socks in the summer too. Yeah, but I won't be wearing them until the, until the swelling comes down. So, right, it's a long process. <laughs> well, maybe Uncle Al has some old socks lying around. Oh, perfect. Yeah. That way you can still be close well, to Uncle Al. These are medical stockings. So. Does your ex wife, by the way, know that you lost Uncle Al's sweater? Yeah, well, Holly is her name. Holly. Yeah. Does yeah. Holly know this? No, but. She, I want to find out more about this Holly and find out her side of the story. Well, we yeah. know this much. We know that she had, she had a restraining order against EZG. Yeah, that wasn't supposed to come out, but it slipped. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, hey, hey, you know what? People get crazy when they're in love, you know? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that also the name of your first album, Restraining Order? Yeah. By EZG? Yeah. On uh, now, Def does Jam? That, does that restraining order still in, in effect? No, it was only for a year. Oh, okay. Now you're all set. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, good. We're glad I you're also. I don't, I, don't, I don't care to see her anytime soon. But. Right. Right. You don't get together at Christmas? No. Sounds like sour grapes to me. I think you're still pining for Well, her. what happens is when, it, when he was married, uh, the king of all farts and Eric's mom would, would take him out to eat sometimes, and she'd always buy the most expensive thing on the menu. Oh. Yeah, salmon. She would get the salmon. Which is rude. That lobster, is rude. Lobster is the most expensive. No, you though. can't block your, uh, you're oh, yeah. blocking your mouth. with Lobster your is the most expensive, <laughs> so it was the second expensive. Right. But, right. Well, that, yeah. that that doesn't make it okay. I can understand why you divorced her. No, she divorced me. Oh, I always get that wrong. I can't imagine anyone divorcing easy. Like twisting the knife, Matt. I know. You know? I I just I, I mean well. Yeah. Right. You know. At least now you can talk about it. Like we're not bringing you back to a a horrible emotion, right? You kind of you kind of no. laugh about it now. Oh yeah, definitely. It wasn't and, a laugh of a moment when it happened. And no, one thing, I know. one thing I would never do is twist the knife in any way. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I just don't, uh, that's just not something yeah. I do. That was one of my favorite morning. you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say, the Easy G birthday show yes. was one of my favorite morning shows in my top 10. Oh, wow. It, it was really, really awesome. I know we give him a hard time, but he got, he, Amanda, no, no, I got emotional. Amanda wow. McCarthy was singing a very beautiful song. Yes. And literally, like, he did, like, he, uh, uh, was very very emotional and yeah. Then she sang it again on the Rob Azevedo show on Friday. Oh, you, you're blocking your mouth oh, again. Oh, she sang with, it again on the Rob Azevedo show on Friday with Tom and two other songs. Did you uh, feel like she was sort of cheating on you in a sense by performing the song again on Rob's show? No, I think oh. it's great. The more shows she can get on, the better. Oh, right. well, did did you cry? No, oh. she no. she's she's been on a lot of different radio stations besides this station. Right, right. Mm. But but uh, what I'm saying is, did, you didn't cry this time. 
No. No. It was it was it was really awesome to see. I didn't exploit your crying. No. Not till a couple days later when yeah. I made the sound bite. Right, uh-huh. right. This one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But still, like I I, I felt for you that day because that wasn't he wasn't crying like because he was sad or anything. He was just emotional about she no. came in and musicians don't get up at seven o'clock in the morning. I'm Usually sorry. Usually they don't. Usually they and, never do. And she did this just specifically for uh, Eric here. Uh huh. And because she said. Eric has been there since she started playing out. Oh, wow. Yep. Biggest fan, super fan right Very here. nice. Easy Very dream. nice. And yeah. she's never had any, any kind of restraining order against you. That's what I'm aware of. All right, good. I guess you'd find out the hard way if she did. It's like a sauna in here. A sauna. It well, is, it is have, warm. I'm going to have to hit the road because i got to go home. Well, right. Where are we'll you wait, going now? Well, we're, well, wait. Before you leave, Eric, so we have we do have a few things in the Facebook live chat to address. So uh, uh, Pete Trouble Morse says, hey, Matt, how about some smooth jazz? Oh, there you go. We can put that on in the background. I know how much <laughs> you uh, – I know, Eric, that every time you come in, you uh, are, are craving that. My mother loves smooth jazz. Can of we, course. Can we do some love advice? Can you give out one – Ooh, good idea. Can you give out one – if someone calls in right now, 250-6007, if you're having a problem in your love life, <laughs> Easy G here is going to solve your problem. As as yeah. 250-6007. That has to be a simple one. Yeah, it can be a simple one. If you call in right now, 250-6007, and give us a, a problem you're having in your love life, Easy G is here for you to solve it. And, you know, me and uh, Matt and I will... Uh, We'll also try to help you out, too. Yes. This is bringing back Easy G's Love Nest. Yes. Oh, boy. Very, very wonderful. Well, of course, the smooth jazz that we're hearing. Stereo. It looks like it's going to start the pour. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you got to get you got to get right in it's gonna there. It's going to look like it's going to start the pour soon. Right. By the way, uh, Angela says in the Facebook live chat that Lisa, your uh, former uh, love interest, Easy G, was, was really enjoying herself, and I kind of wish she could have quieted down and stayed. Yeah, she was getting really nervous. Ah, uh, yes. Michael Alber says, Peter White in the afternoon. Yes, Peter does exist uh, outside of just mornings. Uh, Pete Trouble Morse says, any other ailments you want to talk about, Eric? Oh, I got another funny story. All right. Oh, about, a phone get, call. Get about right an ailment? Yep. Stop and shop days. I was outside. I said, wow, look at this. $5 bill on the floor. On the ground? Uh, on the ground, yeah. And when you know the next day, another $5 bill on the ground. That's funny because I lost two $5 bills. What year was this? Years ago, okay. Stop and Shop. I lost, I, at Stop and Shop, I lost two $5 bills. No way. Years ago? I did. You owe me $10. No. <laughs> and I was looking for a $5 bill the third day in a row, but it didn't happen. What yeah. are the odds of finding a $5 bill on the floor? Right. So two days in a row. No one knew it was ground. someone else's money. Right. I wouldn't do it if it was a $100 bill, but it was 5 that they put it in my pocket. And shut my you phone. wouldn't do it if it was a $100 bill? I would. If I, if yeah. A $100 <laughs> bill, I'd bring it inside yeah. because I feel kind of obligated. It could have been somebody's rent. Right, right. But five dollars is or a great night out. Who pays their rent with a hundred bucks? Well, a part part of their rent. Oh, part of their rent. Right. right. I was going to say part of their rent, and I, I would feel obligated because I found I found people's purse one twice, three times, <laughs> as they say, a lady. Right. And the, uh, I always bring the purse in. The one lady twice. did it. I brought the purse. In, she gave me forty dollars. Three times. She gave me forty dollar reward. Oh, really? Who did? Another lady gave me twenty. Wow. I find that people's purse, they people leave everything behind. As you know, Uncle Al's sweater, water bottles, uh, sunglasses. Well, how much money, if someone returns Uncle Al's sweater to you, how much money are you going to give them? Uh, you could give them that 10 bucks you found on the ground. We'll, yeah, we'll I'll probably, probably give a $10 reward. Yeah. Well, let's, oh. put it, let's put an APB out right now for Uncle Al's sweater. It I is think a, somebody stole it. That's what I think. It is I, a I maroon believe. cardigan. It's very special to our friend Ease here. I, I hope somebody didn't throw it away. I told that to the lady. No one's having trouble in love, in trouble with love. Because you, you're ready to give out some love advice, aren't you? Oh, you know it. <laughs> yeah, give, us, right. give us a call, 603-250-6007. Or you can always, on uh, the Facebook live chat, uh, say something, too, if you have a particular problem uh, oh that you want addressed by Easy G, the love doctor. Oh, here comes the rain. Here comes the rain again. Oh, my goodness. It's very muggy out. Very... God knows we need more rain, Matt. Like we need a hole in it. Right! Wow, that's uh, that's an oldie but a goodie. Y- yes, what a what a great uh, expression that is! Oh, my no. my goodness! Do you hear that one, Peter? Mm, I was we, trying need, to... we need more rain. Like we need a hole in the head. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, he, he, boy, I'll tell you. You got a million of them, man. That's why you're the star that you are. Oh boy! Yes. Do you feel like a star? 
Uh, How good do you feel about yourself these days? Mm. Uh, sometimes I feel like a star. The other day I was walking. Home, I was walking home. The other, I don't know. I was walking. Uh, where was I the other day? I was walking somewhere yesterday, and some guy from Remember, the city. Remember, don't lie. Some guy. No, wasn't no lie. Some guy from the city had his window open. He goes, "Hey, Easy G." There you go. Wow. I said, hey, thanks for listening. That's I always what... try to respond to, hey, thanks for listening. That's good, yes. They, they can listen Jesus to anywhere. They can buddy. listen to any station. They can listen to the Morning Buzz. They can listen to the right. OK for some Q reason, Morning Show. They're listening to us. Right. God knows why, but they are. Well, wow. We, 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 you know, Matt and I try to put out quality <laughs> product here. <laughs> yeah, thanks, hey, Like you say, they can be listening to any show they want. There's tons of stations on We the work radio. very hard on our shows. Yes. I'm not saying you didn't, but you know, they always listen to, to another station. Well, that's... Uh... Listening... To you, bore the living hell out of everybody. Oh, oh. Gee, I, I warned you guys. Virtual oh, John Hopwood is cantankerous. He's in a, a, uh, a, bad, a bad mood today. Well, yeah, he always is. Uh, virtual John Hopwood, of course. Right, right. Yes. He's not the jubilant uh, personality that uh, the real John Hopwood is. Boy, opening is. that window changes everything. It really does. It really does. Yeah. Well. Wow. I guess nobody wants love advice, so I'm going to give him five minutes and I have to leave. All really? right, so we're going to so five more minutes on the love advice. Actually, I think Virtual John Hopwood has a question. And my bowels are in an uproar. Oh, apparently he you just can had, see it on the uh, show. Oh, just had more of a statement, actually, <laughs> oh, so very nice. And by the way, uh, Eric, uh, I, I apologize that, uh, you know, I don't know if you've noticed this, uh, and I, I don't know if you're aware of this, Peter, but whenever Eric calls the show, uh, he ends up getting interrupted and talked over by Virtual Dave Ridley. Yeah, it is kind of annoying. Yeah, I mean that uh, you know, and I you know, I think uh No, no, no I don't. I don't. Well, he's he's denying See, he it of course. He doesn't do it. He said he didn't do it. Right, right. I don't know why anyone would do that to Easy G because when Easy G calls, he always uh, you know, lets everyone else uh speak and Why are you uh, in such a rush to get out of here? Yeah, well, I got to go home and rest my feet. Well, my feet well put your day. feet up. You want to sit on the couch? You want to trade? You want to no, lay down? No, I'm to go lay down. No, lay down right here. No, I'm not going to lay down. <laughs> Why not? We'll lay even down lay down on my bed. No, really, lay down we, right here. We actually have a call. I think someone might need some love advice. Hello, oh, call, Hillary. Well. You're on oh, the oh, air. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Jenny. Oh, hi, Jenny. Oh, Jenny. You I got need... a question. Oh, girl. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Tell is me every... how to is... Oh, is, everything... It up. is everything all right in your uh, relationship, Jenny? I think it is. All I right. think it is. All right. Good. But, you know, every relationship can use a little spicing up. Sure. So what do you got <laughs> oh, for really? me? So, Ease, how, do you, how does, how does uh, Jenny spice up her relationship? Oh, how do boy. they Jesus. spice things up? Maybe Matt could get a haircut. Can you move your oh my hand goodness. away Maybe from Matt your mouth? Maybe Matt could get a haircut. How dare you? Wait a oh, second. Oh, about seven or eight inches. <laughs> no, but I'm telling you. That, what do you that think has, of that, that's, Jenny? That's not what spicing it up means. <laughs> well, it's, not, it's something that came to my head all of a sudden. Right. Well, what, what, I knew no, I'd no. get a reaction out of that. Mm. <laughs> wow. What do you think spicing up means there, buddy? <laughs> I don't know. You, and I think you know. <laughs> I think you know. Go ahead, Ease. Don't oh, be afraid. Boy. Just say. I don't know. We talked about it the a, other day. No hornet's nest there. No, it's not know. a hornet's nest. This is real life. Uh, you not said you imbecile. were going to give us your oh, you, advice. You, you, try, you try, Peter. And I called in. You try, Peter. No, this is Easy G's love oh, nest, boy, not yeah. Peter yeah. White's I'm love nest. No, man, I don't want to hear from, I mean, Pete's nice I'm guy a, and everything, but I called you. Don't want to know, you don't want to hear what I have to say. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. I'll yeah, no, that. you have herpes. I know all about you. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> well, we, we did hear that. I recently. definitely uh, oh my God. I have herpes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. <laughs> oh my goodness! How embarrassing! Oh my god! I hope, hey, I'm not, I hope Stephanie's not listening. <laughs> I throw it all out there, man. It's oh, all I, it's all about suppression. <laughs> right. Oh my yes. god! Yes. Do you know what that was, Ease? Do you know what that was? The herpes thing? It was a it was a match game answer. <laughs> oh yeah, you're yeah. right. It was. You're right. Right. Thank you. I don't really have. Are you sure? Oh, I'm sure. Huh. I haven't had a flare up in years. <laughs> wow. Yes. All right. I don't even call it herpes. I? I call it herpes. I don't know. I'm, I'm drawing a blank because I, I know I know you too well, Jenny. So I can't. I I, I don't know what to say. No, really. Huh? Come on. Oh, you gotta give if you me were a little advice, stranger, dude. Maybe I could say something wild. But... All right. Well, I'm gonna keep listening for it. No, oh, see. Okay. She's gonna get off the phone, and no, then right. then you well, can say. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna be leaving in about one minute. So. No, you're not leaving, man. No, nope, I'm gonna hang up right now, so you can tell us all how we spice it up. Let's spice it all up, right. Love you guys. All right, Bye. It's time Bye-bye. to all it's right. time to spice things up in the afternoon. All right. <laughs> <laughs> only thing, only thing I could think of is maybe, maybe uh, Jenny could slap you or rump. Ooh, oh, oh wow! wow. You That's want, what you I want, think. You want Jenny to slap Matt? I, I couldn't say it in front of her though. I was too embarrassed. Right, but you're not embarrassed now. <laughs> <laughs> so you think that to spice things up in yeah. their relationship, 
that Jenny should spank Matt. Yep. All right. All right. <laughs> that's my advice so, for the day. So that's where I'm coming from. How do you feel about that, Matt? Do you like to be spanked? Well, here's <laughs> here's the thing. The, I think the the bigger question is, do I like that Eric apparently visualizes me being spanked by Jenny? Oh, right. Oh boy. So you're picturing Matt naked. No. That's well, what that means. Well, he didn't say that, but no, I think it is clearly it is clearly implied. This isn't the morning show. I, we don't. I, I, I'm never actually. I'm extremely hairy, so I'm never truly nude anyway. Oh boy. Yeah. Are you really that hairy? You have like I, a I big am. hairy back. And... Oh yeah. Oh I'm no. I'm a yeti. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Super hey, hairy. What's a yeti mean? I'm a yeti American. He's hairy. It means he's very hairy. Yes. Oh, I guess I'm not one. Though. Thick, yeah. rich, and buttery. That's right. Oh boy. That's why I need to be brushed. Oh boy! So you uh, so that's that's your advice. So you want yep. uh, Jenny to slap my rump? Yep. On that note, I gotta go. All right. I feel to kill me. So. Oh come on, man! No, no. We're come having fun on. with you today. It's great to hang out with you in the afternoon. I know, but I gotta go. Do you All have, right. I was feeling better. I would stay longer. Any any suggestions for music that should be playing while she's doing this to me? Like uh, uh, maybe the, some smooth jazz? Yeah, definitely. It's a smooth or maybe jazz. some rump shaker. Who did rump shaker? I can't. That remember. would be Who's Rex that? and Effect. Rex <laughs> and Effect. Hang on, don't go anywhere yet. At Easy G, we got we got one more call. Oh boy! All right, hang, one hang, more call. Put hang, the headphones back hang, on. Hang, hang in there. All right, one more phone call. Hi, welcome to Matt Connors and Unleashed. Who's this? Hello? Hello? Is it the Phantom? Hello? Hello, you're on the air. Hi, so uh, this is uh, Michael Albert, uh, long-time uh, listener, first-time caller. Yes, Michael Albert. So, you, do you have a love question for I EZG? A, got a question for Eric. Um, so uh, my, my girlfriend, uh, she had to move up to Pike, New Hampshire, and I wondered if uh, he had uh, any uh, uh, tips on uh, maintaining a, a long-distance relationship. Ooh, good question. That is a great question. Mm. Uh, that's kind of difficult, I guess. That's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not very encouraging. The guy, oh, this guy they, they, sounds they, sad. Uh, maybe it, it's the uh, the uh, you need to go. Uh, maybe you need to go visit her this weekend. If you know what I'm saying, Michael. <laughs> oh yeah. yes, yes. How much do you miss her? You know, maybe bring her some Bill's donuts. Yes, bring her some Bill's donuts. That's a good idea. You could use the you could use the uh, the business. But turn down your radio before you drive up there. Yeah, definitely radio feedback. <laughs> Oh, that's that's why it took so long for him to answer when I answered the phone. Oh, he's listening to Facebook. Oh, is it Facebook? I bet it's Facebook because. Uh, it, okay. Uh, oh, there we go. How's All right, thanks. <laughs> All right, thanks. All right, go. I gotta go now. Uh, that's it. I'm done. I was All hoping right. for a little more out of that, but well, oh well. Poor Easy G. He's spent. He has to go. Oh, my foot's- uh, apparently cramped. his health his health is more uh, a bigger priority to him than helping people with love. Oh, definitely more important. Yeah, right. yeah, you know, because who, who, need, who needs who needs love, right? Well, some would say all you need is love. That's right. But, uh, yes. Well, all right. Easy G is leaving us. Will you be? Uh, when will you be on the morning show again, Easy G? Uh, Friday. Friday. All right. Friday. Are you still doing the entertainment report? Oh, right. okay. All right. Well, all right. So Easy G's going to leave us. And uh, I wanted to ask you, Peter, how did the uh, the taco tour go? Uh, well, there was a lot of tacos eaten. Yes. Um, the uh, the winner, overall winner for the judges was Kasaki Japanese. Kasaki Japanese yeah, won well, the taco tour? That's right. Fantastic. Wow. Uh, their creativity was fantastic. It was like some seaweed wrap thing. And it really was so flavorful. Yes, you wouldn't expect to. Uh, it was our all. We all, we all uh, agreed on it. Oh wow! It was really good. But there were sixty-seven tacos. So there was a. <laughs> he's, he us. he's gone, man. <laughs> he's gone. He's gone. So you actually, there were sixty-seven uh, participants, think, uh, right around in the, in the high sixties. Yeah. 65, I don't know what it was. And you, and you actually got to every one? I, I, you know what? At the end, I started, like, if it didn't look appetizing to me, because some of these actually were, looked very thrown together. So, you know, we would pass. Yes. Uh, someone someone, someone would, would eat it. And, uh, yeah, the guys that won the contest, they had the best time. Wow. I found out today Taco Tom retired. Now, who's Taco Tom? Taco Tom is a, a man that... Uh, Back uh, back in the day when Taco Bell came to Manchester on South Willow Street. Yes. Uh, he worked there for years and years and years. 
and he just recently retired. Okay. He's a uh, Manchester, uh, we'll say, uh, folk hero, superhero, whatever. Oh. Uh, a great guy. I've had a beer with him before. Oh, wow. He's a wonderful, wonderful guy. Taco Tom, if you're out there, enjoy your retirement. Do you think uh, he and Bill Duncan uh, know each other? I don't know. Bill Duncan's been missing for a while. Yes, yes. Well, we have that wonderful new uh, poster, though, that... Uh... Right. The, the Bill's Donuts. Last there. I heard, he was over at the, he had a kiosk over at the mall in New Hampshire. Ah. Oh, uh, Michael Albert says, Kasaki was good. Shortest line, too. Um, oh, Jenny says, uh, notice that Easy G blushes. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't notice him blushing. His skin is such a... Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know how to describe <laughs> it. Kind of like, I don't know. What, what would you say? Uh, he looks good with his haircut. Yes, he yes. really does. His, his haircut is uh, is quite nice, but uh, I am concerned about his health. It doesn't seem like it's getting any better. You know, he seems like uh, no. I know you think it would be something that just would go away with maybe uh, you know some medicine. Yes, penicillin or something like that. Right? Does that make sense? Penicillin, yeah. If he's got an infection, right. Michael Albert says, would have talked more, but I couldn't hear over the phone. Well, that's very strange. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, what are you going to do? Michael Albert, another guy, a very faithful WMNH listener, and we thank him for that. That's yes, awesome. yes. Now, do you know him personally or just... I just uh... know him through the uh, show. I met him once before. Oh, okay. Uh, on the street, because he actually said, oh, Peter White. And, uh, you know, he introduced himself as Michael Albert. You all know him. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Chris Rose has a question. I don't know if you want to address this or not, but you did say Chris is one of the good ones. I will. Uh, I will. I would do anything for Chris Rose. Uh, well, oh my! Well, his uh, well, Chris, except that. Right. Uh, his question is: Is Len coming back to the morning show? Okay. Um, he's taking some time off. I'm not sure yet. Oh. But probably not. Right. Right. The uh, contract negotiations have broken down. I heard. I guess. Yes. Yes. Well, there is a lot going on on the show lately, though. A uh, real lot going on. Um, it's great. It's great. It, 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 and, and I know that you can uh, say this, too. It's so great to be a part of the local community. It's great that people, you know, we got we got local radio back here in Manchester now, like real local radio. Mm. And uh, it, 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 it's fun. It's fun to be a part of it. Yes, indeed. Yes. Well, and we have. Uh, oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, sure. Ooh. No, I'm yeah. serious, John. <laughs> Virtual John Opwood, apparently, it uh, does not share your excitement. Right. Uh, I'm not an imbecile. He's very, uh, he's very salty. He is tonight. Yes, I don't know why he's. My uh... neurons weren't wired on a matrix from a, a gambling <laughs> program used on your social media. I mean, my God, <laughs> he's really kind I don't of. I don't know uh, what that means. I don't either. But uh... when are the food stamps? You know, you can go, you can go down and pick up your cheese now. Wow! Do they actually? I don't even think they actually have printed food stamps anymore. No, I don't think they do. But uh, Here, apparently, he's here's uh, like a poster child of well, everybody in the world thinks fatuous white guys, Americans are imbeciles and the privileged and just plain worthless. Wow! He's really uh, that would describe us. What did you do <laughs> to Virtual John Hopwood to I, upset him so much? Oh, I didn't do anything. Well, I don't know. He seems like he's uh, a little upset with If intelligence with was electricity, this guy couldn't spark a firefly's ass. That's <laughs> crazy. I can't believe he would... Jeez, Jeez how much dope have you smoked? Well, I mean, right, you know, okay. You, hardy, if hard, you really hard, want to know... Right? <laughs> he's, out of con- he's out of control today. I mean, you know... Can you believe who this? Who doesn't? Who uh, doesn't? Well, uh, well, not but lots of people don't. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, well, I didn't know that. I thought, yeah, I thought everybody know, a lot, did. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people uh, really don't. Uh, um, you think more people don't smoke weed than they do? Pro- uh, probably, right? Uh, I don't know. Right. Probably because there's some closet smokers out there. But I think everyone is, uh, or virtually everyone has tried it at one point or another. I might try it someday. Hmm. Yes, yes. There you go. There you go. So who is um now Mike Doyle is uh d- does he is he also on your show on Fridays? He was on last Friday, yes. He doesn't call as much as he used to. He's, well, he's a busy guy too. He's, he's getting ready to retire. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh yeah, I think he's getting ready to retire and just kind of wrap. He's he's busy. He's doing a lot of traveling, a lot of training, a lot of uh uh but I mean, I, I gotta, we he gave uh donated some great prizes. Which we'll be giving out this week uh, for the the, oh. the uh, Kentucky Derby winners. 
Oh, okay. But there has been some controversy with that, so we got to fix that. But. What What is the the thing? Uh, even Trump, uh, Jenny had pointed this out to me. Even even tr- Trump, who passed away in on absolutely everything, said something about the Kentucky Derby. But I don't know. Well, the horse that won actually went over in the other lane, and and his win, or that that horse's win, was uh, was taken taken away. Mm. And so the next second place horse won. So a oh. lot of people were upset, of course. Yeah. Money wise. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. We have a call. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Good afternoon, boys. Here he is, Mike Doyle. Mike Doyle, how I are heard, you, sir? I heard, I heard my name. I had to call in. My ears were burning. Yes, I didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know that you were retiring soon. Congratulations. Yeah, hopefully in the next year or so. But, yeah, did uh, I did I explain it right it? though? Did I explain it right when he asked me? I said, "No, oh, you're a busy guy. You're working. You're, yeah. you're traveling. You're uh, yeah, going to Eddie Money concerts." Oh. Yeah. I went to the Led Zeppelin uh get the lead out last week. All right. Oh, you did. But anyways, hey Peter, I didn't know there was a what is the I didn't I heard you say there was a controversy with the prizes. Oh no, no, not with our prizes, but there was a controversy. Oh. Now 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 let me ask you. Is is that yeah. is it set in stone now the Kentucky Derby, the winner is the second place horse? Country Yeah, but let me tell you something from a horse aficionado. Okay. That was a bit, that was I think it was a horrible call. Really, first time in the for, history for, for multiple multiple reasons. Multiple reasons. Let me give you let me give you the three big ones. These are three year old horses that don't race much, right? They haven't. They've only had three four races in their lifetime, right? As the jockey said when they were coming around that far stretch, and that horse that won ended up winning. That was disqualified. Easily pulled away from the pack down the stretch, even with all the bumping and whatever going on. So he was clearly the best horse. But the jockey said when they came around the fire turn there, there was 150,000 people there. He, he, as soon as he heard all the cheering for this horse, he said that the horse immediately looked up to the crowd, to the right, which automatically the horse started veering to the right because he was looking at the crowd. And because, you know, these are three-year-olds and they've never seen this, this big of a crowd. Right. Why are all these people yelling and cheering? And mm. so uh, he immediately tried to pull him back and get him back into his lane. But there, there is a thing about going out of your lane, for those of you who don't know. And that's that's more of like when you're coming down the stretch typically and a guy will just veer straight out because he's dying. Right, the horse right. is like quitting and he'll he'll veer out to try to get in the way. This was a rainy, sloppy, horrible day on a racetrack. Slippery, and these horses are coming around a corner. When you, you know what I mean? Picture yourself running in six inches of mud oh, as I know. fast as you can, and you're going around a corner. Can you? Can you? Can you run perfectly straight? Can you not slip a little bit here right, and there? Right. Right. I mean, that's that's the theory. And then the the final big one to me was there's two there's two ways to disqualify a horse. Right. One is during the race, they, they call it an inquiry. That's right. when the judges who are watching the race say there was some kind of foul. That's the, all right? The other one is for a jockey to yell objection, and then they have to look at it. Well, in this case, that's all that happened was a jockey. So the people running the and watching the race closely, they call them the stewards, didn't even say there was a, you know, originally didn't say there's an inquiry here because... Uh, the horse impeded the other one's travel. So for hmm. all those reasons, and then the horse pulling away and winning easily, I I, I think it's one of the worst calls in, in sports history. And, oh, really? And it has a bad name for no did you No, did you happen to uh, make any, any gentleman's bets or have any bets on this? Did you lose <laughs> money off? Uh... Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't call it a gentleman's bet. <laughs> no, okay, because it's legal. That's I, right. I wish it was just a gentleman's bet. Right. So you... Yes, in one of my in one of my tickets, I did have the winner. Okay. The number uh, seven horse. Now, don't you wish? Qualified. Don't you wish you had country? What is it? Country house. Country house. I wish I did. Right, because it would have paid off. Now, let me ask. That's you That's the name of the winner. Country house. Right, and let me. Huh. What yeah. were the? No, this was a long shot horse that made it to second he place. Was, he, he was he was sixty five to one. So in horse terms, that's when you bet two dollars on him, which is a standard bet. Okay. You would double your money plus the two dollars back. So sixty five would make you a buck thirty two for every two bucks you bet. All right. You could have won one hundred and thirty. Why does it have to be so? Horse. Why does it have to be so complicated? It is to me, but I'm well, terrible at it's math. Not. It's, <laughs> it's double the it's double the price plus get your money back. Okay. 
Oh, so, makes sense. But you anyways, know, that's enough. That's you. You stand there. You know, you put a twenty dollar out, and you'd be in pretty good shape. You'd make uh, what would that be? Two, two, two would be a hundred and thirty. Would be thirteen hundred bucks on a twenty dollar bet. So is it unusual? I, I don't know anything about uh, horse racing, but is it unusual for there to be a controversial finish like this? Is this rare? Um, no, it is oh. not. I, well, I don't know what you mean by unusual, but it happens. Okay, but it I, happens quite a bit. But, I mean, you know, not quite a bit. But, not in the Kentucky you know, Derby. Though. I don't know. There's always some kind of claim of foul or a jockey's man because he just got beat or right. I don't know. There's all these different ways, but it's not uncommon. It ha- it does happen, but in this situation, it's never happened before in the Kentucky Derby. So okay, that's uh-huh. that's put a that's put a stain on on the race, especially with the horse going on to winning easily. You know what I mean? Right, right. It's right. There was a little bit of bumping, and then the horse pulled away and won the race. He was the best horse by far. He won the race. And for them to take him down is, I think, a joke. Okay. Does does any, does anything so ever... Uh, so, yeah, how's, how's everything else going wait, there? What, I have another... GW, what are you doing? Uh, you, you've been go, go, go. I thought you'd be hitting the uh, couch quite a bit. Oh no! Quite a weekend there. No, I'm uh I'm here this afternoon. I I don't know. I hadn't seen Matt in a while, and uh, I had some free time to kill, and uh, here I am. Well, I was well got, what do you, Matt? What do you think the odds are on Sunday afternoon? Peter White decided he wanted some tacos for a snack. Oh no, I what? didn't. It, oh, because of the taco tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, there was a lot. I'm not going to eat. I still don't. I still don't have an appetite for tacos yet. Did you go into a food coma afterward? Well, kinda. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and then you know, I, I came in here and Mike here. Well, the first prize uh, was a seventy dollar can <laughs> of gourmet popcorn. Right. Right. Seventy dollar. Wow. Can. That's and, a lot of popcorn. Right. Um, and Mike, you bought uh, Easy G's ticket, right, to the uh, that that event, the uh, the with I for did. Seeds of I Hope. Did. Yeah, because talking yeah, about it food, it was basically my donation to the uh, to the uh, charity. Because so, because he, so uh, I figured somebody instead of just giving him fifty, one, I send somebody the roving reporter Easy G. Right, and he, you know what, he looked great. He uh, sat sat with everybody, and uh, he looked great. And uh, he had a great time. Well, we just thought though it was funny the other day. He called in, in. He called that day into my show, and and he he was talking about eating a big meal before he went so that he wouldn't pig out at the event. And we were just kind of like, "What? Why he, would you do that?" He actually ate some of the food there. Oh, he did. So yeah. he so he pigged out anyway. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. No drinking though. He didn't drink. No. Well. I, I would. Uh... Pete, how did it all go? Just a, give me a quick synopsis of uh, the night, the evening. Um, it was great. I was backstage a lot. I did have some free time to go mingle in the crowd a little bit. Uh, it, it, it was fun. Uh, John Clayton. It was fun. Just kind of, we were all getting ready together, and there was a lot of laughs. Uh, Mayor Joy- yeah, Mayor Joyce Craig was there. She was in the show. Um, they made her up very, very, very nice. Uh, she looked great. We were all, like I said, hanging out out back. A uh, few laughs. Uh, everyone was having a great time. So it, it, it was a it yeah. was a big it was a big hit. Yeah, but, whenever Willard's involved, you know there's going to be some laughs. Oh my God! I mean, it, he was great. A, he really he, was. By the yeah, way, uh, yeah. uh, Stefan in the Facebook live chat says, "Hey Pete, it's Tuesday. Let's get tacos." And he says, "Hey, I still have two pieces of gum, a Snickers wrapper, and one shiny penny to add to that big popcorn." Uh, prize. Not only is it regular, <laughs> not only guys. It's gourmet pop. Wow. Man, you ever have gourmet popcorn? <laughs> I think I maybe a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. it's nothing. Acting like you're it's acting like from it's some, you're Walmart. Acting... You know where you can buy like three tins <laughs> for ten bucks. Well, that's. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. And this one, this it, one isn't. It has some butter flavor popcorn, some caramel corn, oh. and a cheese variety. Oh wow! Now how do you now how do you know that? Did you dip into it? No, it says it right on the bottom. Oh, all right. I thought maybe I was your, the your hand went roaming a little bit. And... Well, <laughs> it didn't. It didn't. Um, hey, it uh, looks like regular popcorn. Hey, this is somebody. Did you announce, uh, did you announce the winners? I missed that. I did. I didn't. I'm going to do. I'll do it tomorrow morning. I wasn't sure. Uh, all right, I'll listen tomorrow. Yeah, I wasn't too too sure. This is somebody new to me in the Facebook live chat. I don't know if, if either of you gentlemen uh, know this person. Uh, Joe Doe McGinnis Jr. is asking, is that couch up for auction? Oh, really? This Well, Mike Doyle has been saying now he's, he's 
was has been looking for a couch with us. He obviously hasn't found the right one. Yet. Right, right. right. I, I, I've seen about twenty of them. Oh. If you really want a couch, I'll get you one. And Matt, nice, t- nice calling, and not having a battle with you about politics or change. <laughs> yes, well, well, it seems to go go to bad places. I know. I'm always up for talking about tacos and uh, popcorn. Yeah, that's I for know, sure. I know. Hey, that good show as usual. I'll talk to you guys. All, All right. right. Mike All right. Doyle, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. The great Mike Doyle, who's usually, uh, is he on Friday with you this Friday? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't talked to him since okay. last Friday. I've been busy. But that's usually, busy. that's usually when he's on, right? Yeah, Friday, yeah. We yeah. usually play some match game, I think, on Friday. Uh, Chrissy Canner will be here to talk about... Uh, to talk about her giddy up for prostate cancer event coming up on Saturday. Oh, okay. Uh, so there's always something going on. Jodo is asking, uh, does it pull out? I assume referring to the couch. I don't know. This isn't a pullout couch. No, it doesn't look like one. That's for sure. No, it looks like a very basic sort of uh, almost futonish. But is there so is there a reason we're we're trying to get rid of that couch and replace it? Is there something wrong with the couch? Who well, the sirens? Right. Easy G might be in trouble. I think uh, the couch itself is, it's all right, but yeah. it's not a regular couch. I wouldn't want this in my house. And right. Wa- I wouldn't want to sit and watch TV on the couch, like on a nice, you know, Sunday afternoon. Right, right. But it's not, it's not as I though I wouldn't take uh, a nap on this couch. Right. But it's not as though it's grotesque in some way. Well, it's I mean, just... I mean, so many people have sat on this couch now. Right. Uh, Jodo is asking, is it leather or fabric? Oh, it's fabric. Yes. It's it's a stained fabric. Oh, my goodness. Well, there's some stains in it. I mean, maybe we could get a new cover or oh, something. Oh, right, right. Yeah, the uh, you know, I, I used to play in a lot of bands, and usually right. in our rehearsal space, we'd have a, a couch. and uh, Plenty of stains those, on that couch? Those couches would be quite stained, right. and uh, you wouldn't want to take a nap on those either. No. Yeah, but, uh, you know, people would stretch out on them, but not, you, you wouldn't take a nap. Yeah, you don't yeah. know what goes on on couches right. behind the scenes. Right, exactly. Uh, Jodo is asking, would you autograph the couch? I don't know. We well, that would that. that would certainly increase the value if we were to auction it. Oh, or D D. Uh, well, we need to get Easy might... G's autograph, really. But... Right, I agree. Or just everybody's. Yes, Rob yeah. Azevedo. Ooh, yes, yes. Um, well, I don't know. That's a good. That's a good question. Right. How much do you think it's worth? That couch, if, seventy dollars. We is, it, is it worth? Is it worth more than the the can of gourmet popcorn? Do you want me to get the can of gourmet popcorn to show you what I'm talking about? I'd be tempted to eat some of it. Right. And I have better to, not. I have to not eat popcorn. And this is actually true. I uh, I told Jenny because you know we had gotten a thing of popcorn, just you know, just popcorn they put in the microwave. Right. And uh, we had to hide it. Like she had to hide it from me. And and it was my idea. I said to her, I need you to hide this from me because the problem is I love popcorn. Really. But. Something about the way my body metabolizes it, it makes me very tired. Really? Like, if I eat a bag of popcorn, I react as though I had just eaten this giant meal. So when you go to the movies, if you go to the movies ever, do you get popcorn to eat while you're watching a movie at at a theater? Yes, and then I always end up regretting it. Oh, my God, because that's a different kind of popcorn. Well, the movie theater popcorn is uh, delicious, but it, it doesn't sit well in my stomach. But just like regular popcorn that you just put in the microwave and pop, like... If I eat a bag of that, at the end of it, I feel as though I've, I've just eaten this giant meal, and it's difficult for me to even stay awake. I go into almost like a food coma just from eating the popcorn. It's something about the way my body uh, metabolizes it. Uh, Jodo says, oh, I'm sorry. Jenny says, hey, he wants to buy it. If you sign it, do it. And Heidi, uh, Heidi Hamer, uh, the Honorable Heidi Hamer, says the couch needs to be replaced. My really? goodness. Yeah. Well, Like I said. I mean, it can be refurbished. Oh, I think it's but a I fine mean, couch. You do? Have you ever I, sat over as there? As couches go, I have sat over there. Okay. I'm trying to think. What, well, when I've been on your show, I've okay. sat over there. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I think it's uh, serviceable. It's it's a basic standard couch. It's uh, not something you'd find uh, like in the Vatican or something. Do you think something. it's worth more than $70? No. Really? This is the kind of couch. <laughs> this is the kind of couch we... This is the kind of couch that we bring down to the corner and then run away. Right. <laughs> you exactly. Know what I mean? Yes, exactly. Like you leave it on the side of the thing. Someone will pick it up. Right, right. Maybe it'll be this guy. Maybe. Maybe it'll be Jodo McGinnis Jr. Maybe. 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 Well, should we, should we, uh, should we offer to do that? We'll put it out on the corner if Phil uh, pick it up? Well, I don't, I don't even want to do that. Yeah, I really don't either. How are we going to get, I mean, we'd have to, like, I don't know if it would fit in the elevator, and I don't want to carry that down the stairs. 
I don't even want to. I don't even want to touch it. Really, I'm, now now I'm kind of grossed out for sitting on it. Right. Yeah. Because you're thinking about what's on it. Right. Like, do you think it's like 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 if you're in a hotel room, they say like, uh, oh, hello to Ed Murphy in the Facebook live chat. If you take like a magnifying glass and you look at the the bedding, oh, especially when, if you put on that like infrared light, where you yeah, know, then, you, then you really see the stains. You'll, you'll and and the bed bugs. Oh yeah. If there's those. I mean, we know that couch doesn't have that, or one of us would have brought them home with us. But uh, Jodo says, I have people that will move it. Well, the, the other issue, though, is, I mean, it's nice that he has people that will move it, but we don't have a replacement couch yet. And we can't not have a couch. No, that's right. I, I mean, what are we going to have, beanbag chairs? I mean. Yeah, I don't know, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a tall guy, so this yes. this actually works for me. I mean, it's okay. What are you, about 6'10", 6'10 and a half? Almost 7. Because I notice you, no. I notice you always duck when you come into the room. Well, I'm, I'm actually only six four. Oh, okay. You just seem right. Maybe I'm used to seeing you next to John Hopwood. Well, I think I think sometimes, like you know, what's funny? There's a picture of me floating around backstage at uh, at the Seeds of Hope Fashion Show where where I'm with uh, Mayor Joyce Craig. Yes. Um. I, so we took a picture, and I look like I'm even taller than I really am. Like, I yeah. look like some sort of freakish giant right. compared to her. What is she, like 4'11"? I don't know. About, I don't so. know. I don't know. But she, you know, we look funny together. That's right. for sure. Because her husband's tall. Like, uh, her husband's tall. Yes, yes. Are you, uh, uh, John Hopwood uh, joins us here in the studio. Peter, do you know what, name-wise, I have in common with uh, Mayor Joyce Craig? You told me some somewhere, I, I don't think I can, I don't think it, I, I can, I don't think I know. We're both, our, our nicknames are Hoppy. Oh, okay. Hopwood, and she was Joyce Hopkins until she married Mike. So, oh, mm. right. He, wow. put, he put a stop to that, Mike Craig. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Right. He insisted. Don't call that, her Hoppy. Uh, she'd be having the. Don't call her, don't call her Hoppy anymore. I, right. I, uh, I did, like, when she was an all, uh, when I found out when she was, like, an alderman, but, and before she was mayor. But, you know. You don't very, walk down uh, the street and say, hey, Mayor Hoppy. <laughs> Uh, right. Someone named Moon Man is asking, "Is this the uh, casting couch?" Well, I wouldn't call it that. I don't know. I mean, if you've I ever mean, seen any of these shows and the people that have sat on it, I'm, I, uh, I don't know. Do you think Glenn R.J. Willett's DNA is on this couch? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Well, probably. Right. Yes. Yes. Well, that's uh, boy. I don't even want to think about that. Uh, yeah. There's. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if we really like could send this in and, and, and we could get some sort of percentage of what was on the uh what was on the uh couch? Right, yes. Someone is uh standing outside, but I can't see who it is because his face is directly behind the uh the uh, logo that's on the door. Right, it's Brendan. Oh, okay. I couldn't tell it was him because the way I'm where I'm sitting, like his face was directly behind well, the Brendan uh, Brendan is the guy around here who has been making us all these great uh uh, graphic art things for our shows. Yes, the, the new morning show one. Uh, yours is great. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle Heavey, uh, Rob Azevedo. Yeah, uh, the weekly die on. Yeah. Oh, it's incredible. Right. Yes. Yes. And uh, John has handed me his phone uh, really? with this uh, story on it, uh, which I can no longer see because it went to the uh, little screensaver there. But it's about the controversy. Do you just want to well, tell us about uh, why you were handing me this? Well, I said, you know, I always send you stuff in the last minute. But yes. I was up at the uh, Carol Robido asked me, I write about the uh, Veterans Administration That's right. Medical yeah. Center for her. Yes. And she asked me to write about there is a controversy over the missing man POWMIA table up there. They put a Bible, a, actually a Catholic standard Bible. Which I didn't even know th things like that. Uh, <laughs> they were different Bibles because I stopped going to church when my grandmother died when I was six years old. Well, oh, I, that's pretty much what I did. Right. <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> it's up there, and there was a complaint filed by people who objected to it, and it was removed briefly, but then it was put back, and a lawsuit, was federal lawsuit, was filed today, and. Uh, the VA, the Department of Veterans Affairs in Washington, is doubling down on it. Because as you know, Trump has the thing about religious freedom. Yeah. I think and he's a very godly man. The local VA people tried to like broker like a compromise, in my opinion, from what I see. 
But uh, <laughs> it's been going on for a few months up there, right? With right. The, with it's that table. Started in January, then in February, uh, the people, the POW, MIA people insist that that Bible should be there. And they actually got a plexiglass box with a big master lock and put it on there, which I guess they said they were going to, which to many people that makes it doubly offensive. But uh, there is litigation, you know, well, going through the Supreme Court now. What is it called? Blandensburg Cross, the Peace Cross, was built in 1925 in Maryland to commemorate the war dead. And it's this 40-foot cross, and it's based on the crosses of the dead from the cemeteries mm-hmm. of World War One. except it wasn't just Christians that died. There were also Jews. Right. And, of course. Uh, they filed a, uh, you know, a brief in the case, and... Uh, this co- the establishment clause. It's that's uh, what is it? Uh, Article six of the Constitution. It's called you know the separation of church and state. And in the Warren era, particularly when I was a little boy, but starting in the fifties, they really liberalized things. Where you know, I remember people couldn't say a prayer. We st- they stopped us from saying prayers in a public school, like in sixty eight. Mm-hmm. That was from like a sixty three case. Can I ask that, a quick yeah. question about being in school and the whole? Uh... Yeah, sure. No, you still, but it's funny, you still get up and stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance and you say, under God. Yeah, we had to do that when I, well, of course, I went to a Catholic but, right? school, but yeah. Yeah, and, uh, but you know, that wasn't put into the allegiance of the 50s and it wasn't put on okay. currency to the 50s. I don't think they do it God. now, though, do they? I don't think they include under God now in public school, do they? I don't think they do. Well, they, it's it's optional, you know, you, you yeah. I guess you, you can, you can't. It depends because it used to be litigated towards the liberal way, and right. now with all the Republican appointments on the court, what is it? It's only three Democratic appointments left. It's going the other way, right? But it's going the other way pretty rapidly, and uh, uh, it's but- really interesting because this is going to be, I think, a major case because uh, whenever uh, this organization. They uh, put military vetments for, you know, like religious freedom from being exposed to the stuff. They usually remove the Bibles. But now the VA is taking a stand. And uh, I, I just sent Carol the text of my article. Well, wait, I, I want to. So just to clarify, who is suing who exactly? All right. Uh, so while John's getting his phone, uh, Jodo uh, says in the Facebook live chat, uh, sirs, what radio station are you on? I can't see it on the mic. Uh, we're on WMNH 95.3. Right here in downtown Manchester on Elm Street. Yes, yes. So uh, who, so who is actually suing who? Uh, a Manchester law firm, Dave Nixon's old firm, uh, filed suit uh, for a veteran, an Air Force veteran who was a pilot. You can see it on the Union Leader and other, uh, other uh, sites that uh, they want to remove the Bible for being offensive and for violating the Establishment Clause. Oh, we have a call. I wonder if this is the... Uh, it could be. The, the, lawyer, the, the, the lawyer was going to call get, in 515. Or... Guess that you were lining up. Yeah, maybe that's who it is. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's on the line? Uh, this is uh, EDG. This is even better than a, 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 the lawyer. <laughs> I wasn't going to call up, but you were talking about getting rid of furniture, and this is an old Holly story. <laughs> we are trying to get rid of some furniture... And we decided to put it in the, in the uh, back of the car, and 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 then we finally got it to the side of the road, and it was a nightmare to get it there because it was really heavy. Mm-hmm. And we put a sign on it says "free." Mm-hmm. And guess what? Yeah. Somebody took it. Oh, it, it weighed over a hundred pounds. We were trying to get it down the street. Where we were living in a, in a mobile park, and believe me, it was a nightmare to get it down there. Wait but a it second, it was worth it because we got rid of it. You lived in a trailer park. <laughs> We did. No wow. way. Wow. You had a charm yeah. to life. Wow. This is more of an anecdote than her, a story. Her mother, her mother was the one that paid most of the bills because God, me and Holly didn't have any money. Oh, and is that... time we were out of work. Is that why you left her? We only survived so long, as you all know, uh, everybody in, this, in the real world, on love. Right. Last so long. Right. Sometimes... <laughs> no, lo- love can last forever, man. Yeah, what there's about another, that... That's uh... another reason that Dave Ramsey would say the money guru... That's one of the major arguments in marriage is, is where is the money coming from? Yeah. And if it comes from somebody else besides you and your wife, like your mother-in-law, 
that causes many, many nightmares. Or Uncle Al. Until you lose a sweater, of course. Yeah, no, he didn't, it wasn't many to come from Uncle Al. It came from my folks, too. And they gave us $1,000, and that, that was the nightmare, too. So, Oh, my goodness. Oh, That's going to be a lot to the people. If you're going to get married in the near future, make sure you have a little bit of cash. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. You can only survive so long. On love. <laughs> oh, I get it. He's giving love advice. This right. is Easy G just giving love advice That's a half right. hour after he left. So if you're yeah, going to get married to my, out there, to everybody out there in the world, yes, <laughs> you got to have a little bit of cash on, on reserves before you get married. Make sure, make sure that you, you do that. That's my advice of the day. I agree, Easy G. <laughs> can I ask Easy G a question? Easy Is G, it about you, love? You and I Is go to the congregate. One, one too many arguments over the years with me and Holly. <laughs> Where's the next money coming from to pay this bill and pay that bill? He's a lot oh like God. Dave Ridley, right? He doesn't listen to the show. What's going it caused, on? It caused a lot of arguments. Right. Hey, uh, Easy G, you and I go to the congregational church when I go, and I think you were an ex-Catholic. What's the difference between the Catholic Bible and the, the Bible we have over at the uh, congregational church? Which I don't well, know very well. A lot myself. of things they don't talk about Mary. That's for sure. Not that often in the Bible. I don't think they talk about Mary that often over at the congregational church at all. No, I mean in the Bible. You know, we were talking. Oh, yeah, about, you I'm not interrupted really a big Bible thumper, but the, I know they don't talk about Mary at the first congregational church. Mary, or, or Mary. Church that I go. <laughs> Is it verboten? Or You're the, not uh, supposed to talk about Mary. The, uh, the, I'm thinking um, of uh, Neil the, uh, Diamond, Jerry, Jerry. Church, Jerry. They don't talk about Mary that often at all. Wow. That's one of the first things. I bought that single like when I was in 1970. That's kind of the difference there, I guess. Mary's a pretty uh, important character in the whole story, it seems to me. Yeah, well, they kind of don't talk about her, I guess. Well, they should. Reason, but I still like to go. They're you, sexist. You should bring her up sometime. Yeah, be like, why don't we talk about Mary? My, my, friend, my friends still kind of give me a hard time. Say, oh, can we don't go to the Catholic Church anymore? So I still go occasionally. They but. talk about Mary. Oh, you should you, you should go all the time. And I said, well, uh, that's not the kind of way the, the way I go the way I roll. I kind of go with the spirit leads me. There. So, oh, that could be dangerous. You, you go to where whoever's <laughs> having the best pork and beans dinner in their basement. That's actually smart. That's a good well, idea. There you go. I got. I, I got. I, I, I don't know if it's one hundred percent agree with me, but it's funny you bring up food. Because we have a thing out called well, the first church uh, meal train, to, not, and they not, gave me this pork, pork dinner. I uh, tell you, boy, was that good. I don't know if it's necessarily 100% agree with There's a lot of theater, media attention. But boy, this, it tasted good. This is going mm. to be something up big. Mm. I, I, are you still there, Easy They gave me a couple Easy muffins, G? and I got cookies. And Easy I got G, some what soup, about Bibles? I got cookies and soup I left downstairs on the table downstairs. Do you think there should be a Bible at City Hall, a big one? So somebody grabbed it, so... I mean, a really. Big I took what Bible. I wanted. I gave the rest to whoever whoever wanted it in the building. So, a cookie anyway, or a Bible. So I got a nice. Uh, I got a nice thank you card for the lady that gave me the food. Cause the, uh, they, they, the they, Bible. They, they do that, and it's all homemade. So, as you, as you all know, it's nothing better than Loaves homemade Loaves and fishes, right? Are you one of those people that just can take a few cookies and just multiply them for the masses? Because they need you down at the food pantry. Oh, he he's allergic to raw meat. So if anybody You're, ever asks you, uh, uh, John, there, if you want some uh, food from the meal train, why would I wanna... say yeah. <laughs> the meal train? <laughs> the meal train? <laughs> Let's see. Do you have any beer? Anchor steam beer? I haven't had any yeah, in a while. The older ladies are all retired. They make food at their house, and they and they give out to who they desire. Who so is they desire? Is that the way hey, to do it? From the meal are you, are they going to seduce yeah. me? So if they don't desire, <laughs> if they don't desire, if they well, don't. No, 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 I got to have my dinner now, so have a good rest of your show. <laughs> the dinner Thanks, he Eric. didn't have that. Uh... Oh. I don't even know what he's having for dinner. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little confused. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, uh, This is confusing. Jodo McGinnis says, uh, if you don't say the pledge, you're a commie. Uh, Dr. Jeff Cassell joins us in the Facebook live chat. Oh, Jodo is also asking, are you in Manchester, New Hampshire? Yes, we are. Uh, he says everyone likes free, especially Bernie Sanders. Uh, Pandora is in the Facebook live chat. She says, uh, hey, everyone. Hey, Matt, what happened to the polls that you were going to do every day? Yeah, you know, other than the uh, that first poll that we did online, you know, we did that online poll, like who's winning the war of words uh, between uh, Donald Trump and the ghost of John McCain. Uh, McCain was the clear winner in that. But uh, other than that, none of the polls I was putting up really got much traction. People weren't really that... Uh, I did one other one. I, I put up a poll. Uh, is Joe Biden a uh, friendly grandpa or a creepy uncle? And uh, Why think- didn't you put one up about there should be the Bible? Uh, should the Bible, a uh, Christian Bible, a sectarian Bible with the New Testament? 
be on display at the VA, which is a public building. Oh, that would be a good poll and very topical. Since it's in the news uh, right now. And, yes, uh, you yes. know, the WMUR boards are burning up. But I have <gasps> the uh, guy's number. He said you could call him. Why doesn't he call us? Can because we- he's busy and he's a lawyer and he's dealing with the media. Well, I don't know how long he can talk. Oh, can we call out on this? I tried to do it one day. and It, it is a little confusing. Um, well, let me ask him. I'll ask him to call Yeah, just us. ask him to call us, yeah. Unless uh, Easy G is going to call back with some more. That was, a, that was a, just a big rant. About yeah. the seduction of food? Yes, yes. And the uh, What do you think he's eating right now? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what Easy G... He can't eat much, right? He has a very, very sensitive stomach, a very somebody, sensitive palate. How can somebody be allergic to so many things? I don't know. He's allergic to raw meat. Yes. How, nobody can be allergic to raw According meat. According to him, he's allergic to raw meat. Well, that would be how? disappointing to uh, Glenn R.J. Willett, the people's mayor, and his son, raw meat, who uh, called us the other day. What? Did you listen to that? Or actually, it was Little Meat. I thought it was Little Meat. That's right. It was Little Meat who called it's us. Called, is it a guy really called Little Meat? I think so, oh, yeah. yeah. That might be his hip-hop name, but he was calling from Ghana. Okay. okay. Very exciting. That yeah. sounds exciting. Now this is Glenn's son. Yes, and the I whole thought, I thought he'd be here by now. And the whole thing is not he's, even the slightest bit creepy. He's like he's like. Uh, Did he need more money? You know the funny thing <laughs> about the missing man when you think about it. The yeah, MI they're they're wait, You know it's like waiting for him. It is a um you know a uh, imitation of the the Last Supper. And you're always you know because we're always waiting for Christ. It's two thousand some odd years now. I only know, Peter, I only know religion. 2019. From Cecil B. <laughs> DeMille. Uh, real, honestly, I know more from that than anything else. So he's always coming, you know? He's always yes. going to be here, but he never quite arrives. Although I have a fe- sneaking feeling that uh, <laughs> he's going to come, it might as well be now, you know? Yeah. Save us. <laughs> Well, bail us up. I'm not in any hurry to see him because if I understand correctly, and I'm not a master theologian, but I believe when he shows up, uh, that's kind of like the end of the world and stuff. Right, I believe. Yeah. And Is that true? I, I think that's how it's supposed to go. I, I, thought, I don't have uh, time for Armageddon. I got things to do. Right. We got, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think I'd even be able to do this show anymore if the world ended. Does Jesus have anything to do with Armageddon? I thought that was the Old Testament. I don't know. It's all very oh, confusing Well, Jesus to me. isn't in the Old Testament. That's true. Right. And that isn't Armageddon in the Old Testament or is in the New One? I, I don't know. Well, it's in the New One. It's in the Book of Revelations. I was always told. I had no idea. I was always told, oh, Hoppy. I was in my late 30s. Some gal ran up. Oh, if you need company, just go in the church and read the Psalms. So I go into an Episcopal place that's open because every catholic church is closed because somebody else is going to steal something there you know because they got good stuff yeah, yeah. and uh, so you open up the psalms you're reading all this like it's poetry then and then oh, oh uh, lord uh, why, why i want you to grab my enemies babes by the ankles and slash them against the wall very and then violent. another one and you know it's beautiful and then all of a sudden and oh my lord I want you to blind the children of my enemies Ooh, right. it's like oh this is supposed to be comforting <laughs> I don't think the lord is supposed to be doing those things well, it is, I think he's yeah, supposed to be nice. nice I mean just look Depends at the you're doing it to. yeah look at the whole passover uh, thing where you put lamb's blood outside the uh, outside your door right and you know the the people coming down uh yeah, it saves you from being killed. That sounds terrifying. I don't hey, you ever to... saw the Ten Commandments movie? Yeah, we, it was I actually, on again. I actually never. You saw You know what it. I'm talking about though? Passover when when it's God great. comes down and and everybody who saves sent, them. If they, I know, but if yeah. they had to put lamb's blood on their door, and then right. and then God would pa- bypass you and oh. take you know really try to get the you know cause God was killing like I don't know how how did that work. Well, the uh, uh, Sir Cecil, uh, was it Cecil? Yes, yeah, Sir uh, Cedric Hardwick, who had shaved his head for the role, uh, got really uh, PO'd because some soothsayer told him that the uh, Hebrew slaves, some the firstborn male, is going to rise up and destroy his regime, and you know then end his contract with uh, Paramount Studios. Yeah. So you know he gets a burr <laughs> under the saddle, and you know you've you've got the king and I, Yul Brenner there, you know with. The, the 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 man bun of all man not buns, you know, this top knot. Oh, even and back then, wow. And uh, so they send. Well, no, that's before he's born. Well, they send everybody out and they're murdering people. But these two, like uh, uh, what they call Anglo-Celtic types, we have uh, a not, grab not, the baby Moses. 
put them in a, a, a basket, send them uh, into the pool. Okay, this is a four-hour-long movie. How long is the story? And then all of a sudden, Charlton Heston's there, six foot four inches right. tall. Well, we have yeah. a, almost, almost as tall as you. We have a call. This might be Hello? the gentleman you were trying to arrange. Hello, you're on the air. Who's this? Uh, my name is Mikey Weinstein. Mikey Weinstein, how are you, sir? Yes, um, th- that's who yeah. that's who we want to hear from. Can you uh, I- introduce yourself to this is John Hopper to the ra- to Matt Connerton and the radio audience? Uh, yes, my name is Mikey Weinstein. I'm the founder and president of a, a large civil rights organization called the Advocacy Organization called the Military Religious Freedom Foundation. We represent around sixty four thousand members of the U.S. military. About ninety five percent of them are Christians and. Uh, they are being um, the people we represent are being uh, uh, tormented for not being Christian enough and uh, not accepting uh, the Christian doctrine that's being pushed down by their military superiors. So we protect the wall separating church and state and support the Constitution in the uh, in the U.S. military. Well, is this uh, centered around the, the the current controversy over the Bible that is placed at the the VA here in in uh, Manchester? The VA hall, the VA medical. Uh, yes, we're um, that's our. Uh, that's an example of our advocacy there. That's We filed a lawsuit today with uh, one of our, our clients as the named plaintiff, and we flew a banner uh, um, around the, uh, the VA Medical Center um, castigating them for this, uh, uh, um, you know, inglorious, despicable, disgusting display of fundamentalist Christian uh, triumphalism and exclusivity, exceptionalism, dominance, and supremacy. So, so what you advocate for? So you don't want? I assume you don't want any uh, kind of religious uh, books or or any kind of other uh, symbolism within the the VA or VA public, hospitals or, or not on not on the POW MIA table. Let's put it that way. They all okay. have chapels. They all are allowed to do that. The VA itself represents over. Uh, uh, they they they've accepted officially over forty different types of religions for their headstones and their cemeteries. Okay. The Department of Defense rep- uh, recognizes, I think it's 220, 240 different religious faiths. But if you're going to allow the, the Christian Bible in there in Manchester, they've actually bolted it to the table in kind of a Star Trek force field, <laughs> transparent, see-through, plexiglass case. They've bolted wow. it there. And, you know, again, we view yeah. that as sticking up the middle finger, and it's like a gang sign of um, uh, our religion is better than all of yours. So uh, the VA is a state actor. They're not uh, a private company like... Hobby Lobby or Chick Fil A, they put those things up too, but they're private companies. Mm-hmm. And they put the uh, the Christian Bibles when they do M I M P O W M I A tables. The VA is a different animal. It's a state actor. It's part of the federal government, and therefore, what they're doing is illicit, immoral, wrong, and unconstitutional. It does seem like uh, by by doing it too, the way that they've done it, it really is uh, kind of uh, they've done it in a, in a provocative way, almost like saying, "Yeah, we dare you to try to remove this." We've We've made it uh, oh, yeah. a, a permanent fixture here. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, has we've this... had other commanders that have uh, reached uh, when we've been, uh, you know, in the military uh, uh, that um, <clears throat> we've had an accommodation where they've taken the Bible off and put down what they call a generic book of faith, which just has readings from the from various faiths: Judaism, Islam, Christianity, Hinduism, uh, Muslim, and they even keep a bunch of pages blank intentionally for uh, you know. People that practice no faith traditions, right? Because um, there are um, we prefer no book beyond there. Some people just put a blank book down, uh, but to put the Christian Bible there. And remember, ten of our fifteen complainants there at the Manchester Veterans Administration Medical Center are Christian themselves, as is the lead plaintiff. So uh, this isn't a question of Christian victimization. It's a right. question. It's a position of Christian equalization. You know, uh, Christianity is not going to be treated uh, in any exalted fashion. More so than Satanism would be or atheism. Uh, Jenny, That's how it works in this country. Jenny in the Facebook live chat is asking, why not allow all books rather than than a ban? Well, it's not up to us. This was placed by the POW MIA organization of Northeast, mm-hmm. and they're very militant about having a Bible there. Yeah. In fact, you saw the size of that Bible. Yeah, that's an altar-sized Bible. I looked. To, I I used to. Have, we used to have one at my house, uh, and they're big. And I looked it up online while I was writing the article. They can be nine, ten pounds. Wow. Now, according to the POW MIA people and the VA, which has declared that a World War II artifact, this was a Bible from a ninety-five-year-old World War II veteran. Mm-hmm. Now he carried that into combat. He had it with 18 months 
in a POW camp, and he escaped the POW camp all the time with a nine, ten-pound Bible. Does that make sense to you? Mm. Seems very, very unlikely to me, but irrespective right. of that, that, that's his journey. That's great. But the last time I checked, not all POW MIAs are, are Christian. Right. Yes. Uh, and again, that Bible is, like you mentioned, is a, is a uh, altar Bible. It's a, it's a Catholic Bible. And um, uh, to sit there and try to argue, as Bob Jones, the head of that POW uh, network, told me that, you know, he said, Mikey, that, that Bible represents everybody. Uh, if that was the case, then we'd have nothing but crosses on VA cemeteries. Right. We don't. Right, exactly. We would, we would only have one religion recognized by the Department of Defense. We don't. We have a, nearly a quarter thousand. And um, yeah. that's what's, uh, th- this is what is so just, you know, wretched about it. And so that's why uh, we have to fight it. Is this going on at other VA hospitals specifically? Oh, yeah. In, in other... I mean, the VA, we've been fighting this for 15 years at uh, on aircraft carriers, submarines, even airplanes, large cargo planes, you put these things up, military bases and VA hospitals everywhere. We've gotten a lot of them taken down. Mm-hmm. But we noticed a um, that after Trump became the presumptive uh, candidate in the summer <laughs> of 2016, not even two years ago, I'm sorry, not, not even three years ago, we started seeing a, a, a much more uh, a lower rate of success here. Remember here, when I contacted the VA on behalf of that then January. 14 uh, veteran families in yeah. late January, in, in just a little, one minute past three hours after we made the demand, they pulled the Bible off the table, sent me an email saying, essentially thanking us for letting them know about this yeah. and that to make sure we told our our um, um, complainants, our clients, that the VA there respects everybody. Uh, it's a, it's a, there's diverse, it's a place of diversity and inclusivity. And um, that, that we, we, they wanted to make sure that we told our clients that the Bible had been pulled. That lasted us for a couple, three weeks before they stuck it back on there with that bolted uh, um, you know, force field around it, and um, well, first now they're they... saying no. That's um, that's a spe- that, that has nothing at all to do with religion, which of course is counterintuitive in the extremists. And right. you know, like I said, it, it, why are we even talking about this? This is as stupid as um, uh, as I can possibly imagine. To try to to try to argue that this isn't an act of uh, of Christian dominance is um, literally irrational. I'd just like to add that first it was removed. And then there was a brouhaha, and uh, I guess there's an, a, 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 I've been checking the site, POWMIA, I guess there's a, in a spirit of compromise, what well, was worked out, it was moved to a case. You see, uh, uh, the right. table a, display, a display case, which a, a bunch of our complainants still didn't yeah. like, um, but at least it wasn't on the POWMIA table. Which, and that would still be yeah. uh, a compromise that we could accept. Our, our, our plaintiff, ourselves, we don't like it, but we could accept it. But not on that POW MIA table. See, that, that is a yeah. um, um, that that is a, a sacrilege. That is unconstitutional. That is establishment of religion in direct violation of the you no know, establishment clause of the First Amendment of the Bill of Rights of the Constitution. It's also cr- essentially creating a de facto religion test at yeah. the, at the um, VA, which is in violation of Clause Three, Article Six they of have, the Constitution. They and have, um, you know, as I said, two thirds of our complainants in Manchester are Christians. Yeah, right. As is the lead plaintiff, a very devout Christian. But they're firmly committed, clearly, to separation of church and state as a principle. Well, yeah. um, yes, and I, I wanted to read a quote to you, um, and because um, I was in the uh, the White House working in and for the, uh, the West Wing for over three years. Ronald Reagan. Here's a quote from the time I was in the White House, um, from Ronald Reagan. Okay. Quote, we were founded as a nation of openness to people of all beliefs. And so we must remain. Our very unity has been strengthened by our pluralism. We establish no religion in this country. We command no worship. We mandate no belief, nor will we ever. Church and state are and must remain separate. All are free to believe or not not believe. All are free to practice a faith or not. Uh, you, know, you put that Bible there, you might as well put you know, um, uh, a cross and write the word crusaders on fighter jets. fighter jets. Oh, that's right. The Marine Corps did that, and so did the Air Force. We stopped both of them from doing that. They had they had uh, called uh, two of their different uh, airframes, combat air fighter frames, crusaders, and put uh, a Christian cross on those planes. Oh. Can you imagine the message being sent downrange when we're fighting against uh, Islamic extremists? Right, I, I didn't see that. I didn't know that. I mean, this is just uh, it's willful stupidity. What? And uh, but it's it's something we would come to expect from the Trump administration. <laughs> it's willful and, um, We're not going to yeah. stand for this. So the VA now can simply follow five words, which is tell it to the judge, gentlemen. I don't have too much more time left, okay. but. There are any questions? I think we we could be been over this subject pretty well. 
Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I don't. Uh, I know you're, uh, you're very busy dealing with the media. So I have a question: have, Has it ever come to this where you've had to file suit against the VA? No, no. This is wow. a, um, okay. um, this is a historic lawsuit. It's never, never come to this before. This is the first time, and um, it'll be, uh, uh, you know, our the law firm that we use is a wonderful firm, Nixon Vogelman, right there at 77 Central Street. Oh yeah, in Manchester. Larry Vogelman has a, and his firm have a long history of supporting veterans' causes, so they're fantastic. And we expect to prosecute this as aggressively as we possibly can in Concord, in the federal district court. It's never this is a this is historic. It's never been there before. One All more right. question: uh, What is your feeling that you know the the Washington, the Department of uh, Veterans Affairs, took over? You know, when it came to issuing a statement from the Manchester VA, and it was a very provocative message. Uh, the Veterans Administration apologized to all the veterans who were offended by the Bible being taken away, but didn't apologize. Nothing that I didn't expect um, from the Trump administration. The fact that you know you're not even, you're not seeing anything coming out of uh, Manchester. They're handling it themselves with their ad hominem attacks, rehashing old and cr- no. incredible you know crap. And um, but it doesn't like I said, this isn't a complex meal, gentlemen. Right. Like Chateaubriand, right? It's a simple hamburger. That, yeah. You cannot put your religion symbol on a on a uh, in, important display in a government building, having it, you know, in a uh, uh, a display about a POW in a display case with, you know, with his helmet and other stuff, maybe that's fine. But on the POW MIA table, there's nothing more sensitive than our prisoners of war and the missing in action, right? You know, that's uh, who often become more. KIA. And um, uh, this is just, uh, uh, you know, uh, people like Ronald Reagan and Barry Goldwater will be rolling over in their graves. Mm-hmm. This and is John wrong. McCann. And the VA knew it. They didn't. They didn't. Uh, they, they they claimed they pulled the Bible off, John, by uh, operating out of an abundance of caution. No, they didn't. They did it because they knew it was exactly the right thing. Then they started getting flack back from this uh, POW MIA network, which is represented by the First Liberty Council, right. a group of fundamentalist Christian, you know, uh, fascists in the in Dallas Fort, the Dallas Fort Worth area. We know them very well, and they know us. And then uh, they they uh, I guess uh, got Mr. Montoya, your director out there in Manchester, to put it back with a vengeance. <laughs> with that uh, plastic transparent force field bolted to the table. Wow. I think that was the statement. idea of Bob Jones, the uh, plexiglass. Oh, well. Uh, I've got, I'm doing some more research. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's truly amazing because it's, it's, it's going to create that. We've already gone through at the Manchester VA uh, a, a crisis, and things were getting better. And now, from up above Washington, they are triggering a crisis to pit people against each other. And, and um, that's exactly why we flew the airplane today with that message right. around the headquarters there, the building, uh, so that people could see it, understand that we're quite serious about this, putting a bunch of exclamation marks behind it. And um, so this has now been taken over directly by the Trump administration in Washington. I'd love to hear what Mr. Bernie Sanders, um, what um, Joe Biden and others would say about this as they come to the Granite State, which is a very important state, plays a very yes. crucial role for, you know, for, for big mo momentum in the 2020 election. I would love to, to see, and I think, John, we talked about this, um, directly reaching out to the, uh, the I think we kind of know what the Trump campaign is going to say. Well, but I'd yes. love to see what, that the other uh, you know, <laughs> 8 million Democrats that are running, what they would say about this. It should be a two-inch putt. It should be very simple. We are not dishonoring Christians. By you know by you know by taking the Christian Bible off the POW MIA table, as I said before, gentlemen, that is not Christian victimization. It is Christian equalization. In America, you know we don't count heads before enforcing the First Amendment, and that's what Sandra Day O'Connor said, and that's what we missed her on the Supreme Court. But you can't put if you put. Can you imagine what happened if we put the Book of Satan there, or a Koran, or Richard Dawkins' right. the God delusion, which is kind of like <laughs> I think we should. The God is not great, These but we don't are, know you know, Kind of revered as the quote Bible for. Secularists, you know, humanists, atheists, and agnostics. As I said before, John, when we spoke earlier, there would be blood in the streets of Manchester. I so think why that... is it okay to put a Christian Bible there? Someone explain that to me. Right. Well, you know what? Uh, the VA can explain it to the federal judge. There, yeah. you, there you go. There you go. Interestingly, the VA is claiming that it is a secular display with a Bible. <laughs> yes, that, that's. I mean, that, that's it's, the, it's, the, these are the same people no. who say that the uh, look. Even Nikki Haley took down the Confederate flag right. on the, the Capitol of Columbia after Dylan Roof shot and killed all those people that's true. at that African American church. That's true. You know, that, yeah. It's utter and it's the big lie. It is. It is not a secular display. It is anything but a secular display. And as I said before. 
um, um, our our plaintiff is not a nominal Christian. He's a He's devout, devout Christian. Uh, devout Christian. Right. Former Air, Air Force pilot. Right. And we have nine other Christians in our group of 15. And then, of course, we have the minority faith, as I mentioned, Judaism, uh, Jewish, Muslim, Native American, sec, uh, uh, Buddhist, and then atheist, agnostic. And um, so um, um, they can argue it's secular. It's, it's very easy for them to say. Mm-hmm. You know, I just had someone put a cross on my father's grave the day on, on Easter. And that became a front page story out here in the Albuquerque Journal because uh, that wasn't, you know, that wasn't a, a display of Christian love. That was sacrilegious. My father was, was a World War II Korean and uh, Vietnam veteran. And it, they put a cross on his grave. There were no other crosses there within, uh, within 500 feet of that place. Is there a star you know, David? So we know what that was about. Is we there a star exactly David on his grave? About. And that's why I said, you nail it down, you bolt it down. That is a freaking gang sign. John, did you see the uh, quote I gave you? Yes. Because if not, I'll read it to you right now. Go ahead. Here's my final <laughs> quote uh, uh, on this show, if, if you guys are ready. Yeah. Sure. That yeah. sectarian Christian Bible bolted down to that POW MIA table at the Manchester, New Hampshire VAMC is a grotesque gang sign of fundamentalist Christian triumphalism, exceptionalism, and supremacy. Indeed, a middle finger of unconstitutional repugnance to the plurality and separation of church and state guaranteed in the U.S. Constitution. As a state actor, the VA cannot elevate one faith over another faith, or no faith. The VA is wretchedly disrespecting millions of American veterans by doing so. The VA has ignominiously made sure that that sectarian Christian Bible sticks out like a tarantula on a wedding cake in that POW MIA display, and they've done so for a reason. It's immoral, unethical, and blatantly illegal under our Constitution, and we look forward to aggressively prosecuting our case in federal court. Gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to be on this show today. All right, sir. Yep. Thank I'll, you so much for I'll calling. I'll talk to you later because I'm going to do some follow-ups on, on this. All right, Mr. Weinstein. Sounds good. Take, take care. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. What's interesting right, well. is they, I can show you. They have the, a table at the Bedford Mass, uh, you know, the missing man table. If you're not here, Paul. There's POW MIA, a table. Oh, yeah. I heard about it in the yeah. news today. Yeah. And they don't have a Bible at uh, Bedford. And this well, is hold a, on a minute. Now, is isn't this big, isn't big this Bible. display um, in memory of a a, a, a soldier no. who fought in World War II no. and he it, carried this Bible or something while he was fighting? Well, uh, that's the story I read. So that's not true. It's false. What I read. No, a uh, the missing man is for it represents everybody that was a POW MIA. It doesn't supposed to represent anyone any individual no but i okay so the story i read today was about a soldier who carried this particular bible that's on display he held it with him while he was fighting yeah i'm going to show you the bible it weighs about 10 pounds and allegedly he took it into combat but he had he had it with him in in his possession while he was do you think do you honestly think that a 10 pound uh, altar sized bible you could take into a german concentration camp well i'm I'm, you didn't you watch hogan's heroes (laughs) no i didn't worst show ever (laughs) worst show ever but the, when you went into a camp, but he had were, it with him. He had it with him amongst all his other. We possessions. don't know if that's true or that's not. That's his claim. That's a claim. Okay. And I find myself. Everyone's given. Uh, you are. You're given a, a little pocket-sized Bible. There was. A, all right. Well, let's say if it's true. Which it, well, okay. It and let's say what about the pocket-sized Bible? What if that were the thing? Now listen. Okay. I'm not religious. Um, I'm a Christian. Um, very, very, very part-time Christian. Okay. <laughs> Bro, yeah. I've learned everything I, in fact, I know from Cecil in B. Fact, DeMille. God hasn't heard from me in months. But anyway. <laughs> he hears um, from me all the time. How would this be any, I mean, this is a display about, a, as far as what I read. And let's say this article that I read was true. Okay, let's put it this hypothetically where this gentleman actually did carry a Bible. And let's replace the 10-pound Bible that allegedly is there and replace it with the pocket-sized Bible that he carried. Okay? Yeah, I saw that. I saw it John on John is display. showing you, personally. Right. Thank, okay. Okay. It is a, so, a 10 pound. All right. So let's say it was the pocket-sized one, and it was on display there. Would people still get their feathers ruffled? or? I think so, because the, the, no. the central issue, well, the central issue is... If it's, it's on a, the table. It, it, it being on display the way that it is, regardless of, of how large it is, it's, mm-hmm. it's violation of separation of church and state. But it's it's promoting Christianity in that when the original setting. complaints were made in January, uh, the people you know it was a local issue, and they they took it off within three hours. Then there was a bunch of uh, blowback, and they moved it 
into a display case. You have to remember, it's supposed to be in a dining hall. In Bedford, it's in the cafeteria mm-hmm. because you're, it's about dining. You know, it's a metaphor for the uh, Last Supper and that right, and resurrection right. or finding your loved ones. So it is It's a, about the war memorial, and it has a quasi-religious theme even before you put, you know, the Bible on. But then all of a sudden, Carol Robodeau in February, you know, did the story, and the POW MIA were very militant. When you, I was reading things— they say, oh, we'll, we'll just bolt it da- down to the table. And so you have it in this big plexiglass with yep. a big master lock. Mm-hmm. That's a statement. You know, that's a statement. It's, yeah, that, it, it is. I was it, personally, you know, I wasn't happy what, about What's the that. statement do you think that is? What do you think they're saying? See, I would, walk yours, right by it. I would walk right by it and not think of any that, of these That's things. exactly what I'm saying. Right. It You're would not, be no big deal if it was a, the cat in the hat by Dr. Seuss. Are you a veteran? It was a book that are the man veteran? carried while he was in are battle. Are you a veteran? No, but I, I believe in God and I'm a Christian, but, I don't, Do but you, I'm not a religious man. And it doesn't matter to me what book it is that's sitting there. The man fought for our country. But it's and this not in, about one person. That was a Vietnam So this, this article thing. I read today was just made up then on, on MUR.com. It was, it was a display remembering a man. No, it's not a display remembering him. They took the Bible. He allegedly mm-hmm. was a volunteer there. It's a humongous Bible that nobody could have taken that through a, a, the, the time. Okay. You know, the provenance is very... Very fishy to begin with. Mm-hmm. But the point is, it's supposed to be a generic. This thing is set up when you come into the main entrance. Yeah. So you can avoid it if you come into the main entrance. Right, right. If it was in the cafeteria, and it shouldn't have a Bible in it anyways, it should probably be in a dining place because it is right. for about the dining. This is really you know in your face, and it became very much in your face. Right now, at the same time that this was exploding in February, mm-hmm. the Supreme Court was uh, oral arguments for, what was it, Blandensburg Peace Cross, this mm. 40-foot yeah. cross in Prince George's County, Maryland. Right. And uh, from the oral arguments, it looked like the Supremes are ready to say it's constitutional. Yeah, this isn't a 40-foot cross, John. This is a book sitting in a display. But if you have to read, the, that's a war memorial they've created, and they've made it secular. They have made it about a sectarian mm-hmm. religion. Jews died yeah. right. in Vietnam. Yes, Jews they did. died in World War Two. Mm-hmm. They don't accept the New Testament. Right. Uh, you know, we could go. Uh, yeah. I wrote an article for uh, uh, Carol where I go into some of the law because I read the Jewish War Veterans Amicus Brief uh, in Blandensburg, mm-hmm. but. Uh, yeah. This is a deliberately provocative. You know, right. you can yeah. do it in other things because you should have a Jewish Bible. There, there is a person. You know, mm-hmm. when I hear certain politicians in this city, so what over else is on? Time, dis- what else is on display with the book? But I'm just going to say, uh, on the wall, we, we can go on the wall. There's like a, a wall of honor for the people that have died in the wall on terror. There's a guy. You know, there were Muslims on that wall, Hispanics. There's a guy. There people from Africa who died amongst the first people that died, and you know. I, I was in the, uh, you know, I was in the army, and I served with uh, Jews. I have a family member who's a Muslim, and I've been up there under the old regime, mm-hmm. where they, where after Trump became president, people felt they could just make uh, anti-Islamic uh, comments, mm-hmm. towel heads, this and that, and uh, w- part of the therapy of the combat soldiers coming back is just like with the Vietnam vets, that this continual thing in your mind of the other. Because, you know, mm-hmm. you've learned to hate the other, the other. And it is not a good thing for uh, your psyche. So one of the things is you don't use the word gook if you're a Vietnam veteran or you discourage it because mm-hmm. it just keeps you in that cycle. And then they're, te- they're trying to teach the kids not to get, you know, back and flashback hell. And then suddenly people are using the, this. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, uh, I, remember, you, I remember I told you about that, but. You know. Yeah. So there had been a lot of progress made up there, and they were handling it. But then I believe Washington stepped in. Right. Washington's issuing the uh, press release that was so provocative. You see, 
You're right. In a, if they, I, 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 my suggestion was you just take it down to the cafeteria, mm-hmm. put it there, right. and there's a display case for for these, you know, because they have they sell things to veterans. Then you put in a Bible, put in a, 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 a Quran, you, know, you know, put in all the various Torah, things to yeah. to people. Right. But see, this isn't for just one person. It's supposed to be for everybody. Right. Wow, okay. And they're and they're and they're, they're shoving it in everybody. your face. And if and it is provocative. When, right. And when if you come and it's in a big yeah. plastic thing, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's got a master yeah. lock and it. it's like, geez, you And know? if you're walking in there and you're a Jewish veteran or a Muslim veteran or whatever, you've got this in your face. And now, it's that whole we're a Christian nation thing. And it's, uh, you know. I was in uh, AIT. That's the school where you go after uh, language school, Russian. You learn how to, the Defense Intelligence Agency is teaching you how to do what you do, communications, which still comes in handy. And we have to go to Easter formation. And one of my friends is Jewish. And, uh, you know, geez, uh, I said to, I said to uh, one of the sergeants, I don't want to go through this. At the time, I was more agnostic. Yeah. Uh, and so they let us go to the back and, you know, uh, just talk amongst ourselves with one of the sergeants. And a few kids that came with us that thought it was a bunch of BS because they had a big bunny, some guy that's taller than Peter or the... Uh, the, uh, the the bunny the, the bunny suit was bigger. There are many people. I, he's like six ten. There aren't many people taller than him. Angela, ever, Angela Filmbrook's husband is taller than me. Wow. Have you, have you ever seen Harvey? Can you imagine if he had a Harvey? Oh my goodness. Maybe he does have. Feet tall. Maybe he does have a Harvey. And we just so can't you know, see him. if you're Jewish or you're Muslim, so you've gone through a lot. In fact, uh, Weinstein in Carol Robito's article. And on his website, he talks about how he was bullied when he was at the Air Force Academy, and his sons are, because of anti-Semitism. And uh, Bob Jones said, well, he's just angry. He, he brought that up about him Jewish. What's the standard, one of the standard tropes about Jews? They're the angry Jew, you know. I've never really heard that one. Well, you, you, I lived in New York and Boston, Oh, baby. Well, well, yeah. well, in a big there city. There was just a thing about this. Everybody's the, angry. There's an yeah. app for a game <laughs> called The Angry Jew, and the JDL, the Jewish oh, Defense really? League, said, oh, okay, this is okay. But uh, oh. this is a one of the, this case, Dave Colapinto, who was Linda Tripp's lawyer, you know, said, nothing's more exciting than one of these cases. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. It's very interesting. I'll be interested to see how it all turns out. I, I suspect that... Uh, They're going to take the book out, Matt. I would suspect yeah. so. I don't yeah. know. They're not going to take it up. They're going to the put election. it in a storeroom somewhere, and it'll all be over. <laughs> I just told you the outcome. <laughs> it's, oh, no. all right. it's good to have Polly C here. <laughs> yes. Well, if you could... If you, this thing is bigger... Then They're the, making the me monolith. believe in Jesus. <laughs> this is the, get big, rid of the biggest book. thing since Monolith <laughs> in 2001. No, but people people get triggered. You know? Well, of course. Yes. I can see how that would happen. Oh, but, Jesus. I mean, it, it's the size of a friggin' uh, a Prius, you know? Oh. Jesus, buddy. Gee, no kidding. Yeah. There's oh, no way. You know, in my opinion, there's no way. Nobody could take that book through, through that. There was a person, and then we'll, we'll wrap this up, uh... Clemson. <laughs> thank, oh, thank you, uh, John. No, but do you want to talk about There is a guy I, that I went get, through a... You know, uh, yeah, I stopped uh, by to hear John for a half A minute. prisoner of war camp, and it was. He He's had not one doing his show tonight. So. Oh, that's why. Why aren't you doing your show tonight? Just taking yeah. the night off? Oh, I was up there doing this, and I had to bang the article out. Are you going to the Alderman meeting tonight? Jesus, that, that's one of the best... I'll go I, with you. To the Alderman meeting? Yeah. Do you get paid? We'll make a night. We'll here? have some laughs, John Hopwood. Well, I'm, I'm so <laughs> I'm exactly throw Bob uh, at them. So I want to know before we run out of time. Why are you here, uh, Paul? I Cormier? have a, a new uh, a new schedule at work. You do. So you might be seeing me for the last half hour every now and then. Here. Very nice. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. Oh, lucky. So what? Do you, what do you just every week? Go in earlier and leave earlier. Or I go in a little bit earlier. Yeah, and I leave great. a little bit earlier. Great. So it is great to hear. That yes, is awesome. But I won't be missing the morning show. I'm not going in that early. Okay. So I'll still be able to catch uh, the morning show with you, Peter White. Yeah, you should come in tomorrow morning. I'll, uh, that is a strong consideration. All right. Now, All is right. this something you, uh, did you go to your bosses and no, say? No, they approached you know, me. Oh. So. Did they try to seduce you with food? No, they didn't I'm seduce me I'm not trying to food. seduce you. Was Easy G no. <laughs> part of this? No, Easy G, he, he might be behind the scenes, but it's nothing that I'm in on. Oh, okay. Well, so. Because he was... <laughs> He was offering to, uh, what were they, what were the elderly women were going to seduce me with food? And you know, I had to turn it down. You know, it yeah, was obviously, if they're going, yeah, they're not, like if you're not good looking, they're not going to give you the food. Right, right. right. That was what he, uh, which is uh, terribly discriminatory in so, my opinion. So you're saying he was uh, mocking me. 
Because they weren't going to give me the food. I think you're a pretty good looking guy. Oh, thank you. He is a sexy beast. He's right. handsome. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I've never in my life been called handsome. Well, no, it's except spe- by my mother. It's your special day today, John. <laughs> wow. Well, oh. oh, if I only had the the, the hearts around my head. <laughs> oh, about seven or eight inches. It's a love fest here, and uh, Matt Connerton unleashed in the afternoon. Yes. Right. Yes. Well, well, it's been an exciting Four show. Dudes. Four yeah, dudes. Four dudes. Like, Four that guys. plane. Uh, the plane's flying over, and it's overcast. You can't get a decent picture. You know how cameras, how quirky they are. I can see it, but the camera can. What, right. are, you, what are you talking about? Well, they had the, a, a prop plane flying a banner, flying over the VA. Oh, yeah. right, 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 right. And what does the banner say? Uh, up yours, buddy. Eat it really? Joe's. Oh, Bill's donuts. <laughs> Eat Bill's donuts. It was Eat at Bill's. <laughs> But, uh, before we run out of time, a couple of comments. I'll give you a pitch and you should change it to that. A couple of comments in the Facebook live chat. Uh, Rhonda said, no religious favoritism, all or none, preferably none. And Heidi Hamer, at all. Heidi says, uh, I need bolt cutters. So, Do you like you the go. name Rhonda? Everybody like the name Rhonda? I like Rhonda? the name Rhonda. Yeah, it's, I mean, Reminds yeah. me of the song, Help Me Rhonda. Right, right. I, I don't know any Rhondas. I have no. I, I do not have any Rhondas in my life. Once when I was a kid, there was a Rhonda in really? my life. Really? Yeah, second grade, third grade. But really? other Rhonda? than that, no other Rhondas. Rhonda is a very rare individual. She voted for Trump and regrets it. Yeah. That, that's wow. like finding a unicorn. Because mm-hmm. most Trump voters I know are literally incapable of being embarrassed or ashamed about anything. Mm-hmm. Tonight I'm going to try right. to get Trump to tweet about this if he hasn't already. Oh. No. Yeah. Oh. Well, he did tweet about the Kentucky Derby earlier. He likes to weigh in on everything. Jeez, my horse came in fourth. It came in fifth. Oh, I didn't it only know. came in fourth. You came real close to a $70 can I of wanted, gourmet popcorn. Wow. I wanted to come in number wow. three for the Dunkin' Donuts. It's delicious. Right. You mm. wanted number three, right? Did Bill Berry win? Um, I forget who. Uh, I, I, I gotta, He's claiming I gotta he look had the, my, uh, the horse that got disqualified. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, he did. Because we got the two best horses. That's true. And, <laughs> and Country Home won, so Bill's out. Who what got did the, you do uh, the popcorn? horses? Who got the popcorn? I, I, I'd have to look. I think T did. I have to mail it to Florida. Who won the tacos? I don't even know. I got, I got to look at the thing. You're tired? Am I tired right now? Not too bad. I had a big cup of coffee here this uh, afternoon. You have to get up awful early. Mm. Not too bad. I get up at 5.30 every morning. You wake me up every morning. Oh, well, thank you, John. Welcome <laughs> to my world. I know, uh, right? Oh. I told you, know, Dean, Dean lasted a hell of a lot longer than the other fella. Apparently, Angela <laughs> Angela says she has a cousin named Rhonda. So there you go. All right. Well, we should. Uh, we do have to start to wrap up, so no show for you tonight. So you have nothing to plug. No. I don't have to program. You no. don't have to program. That's right. You, you, but, do, you, you get paid, though, right, whether oh, we go or not. Here, we have a call. I don't want to discuss that on the air. Let's okay. grab Let's grab this call real quick. Hi, welcome we to Matt Connors and Unleashed. Who's this? Who else would be calling you when you have one foot out the door, Matt? <laughs> Brooklyn, <laughs> Mike. Brooklyn Mike. Brooklyn <laughs> What's up, my friend? Howdy, guys. How are you all? Good. How are you? Hey, Brooklyn Mike. Speaking of handsome. <laughs> he is a doing, handsome guy. I've never seen Doing well, before. thanks. Matt, you know, it's not like me to uh, impose upon you, but I do have a request, if I may. Yes. Smooth jazz. You want you want some smooth jazz to play us out? Oh, I want I want lots of smooth jazz always. I don't know what oh. that means. I, to play us I out. I love that show <laughs> so much. The show? I love that. I love the show so much. I listen to it a second time. Wow! Well, and you that's... call yourself a yeah. fan just twice? I'm still thinking about well, Robert. <laughs> Right. Where oh my god! I think oh we should goodness. run her for Alderman at Large, Rhonda. Well, I will. And, uh, um, I will end the show with some smooth did, jazz. Yeah, go ahead. No, I uh, <laughs> I did something kind of quirky, but then again, uh, that's kind of my nature. I counted how many times smooth jazz was said in that show. Oh my god! <laughs> how many times? Two hundred and ten times. Really? Wow! Wow! Two hundred. Yeah, and you know what the close the close second was, right? No. The word groovy. Oh, was it really? Times. I did le- one times. I did lean on that pretty heavy. Yeah, <laughs> it's it a was great, great word. I loved it, Matt. Well, uh, well that's wonderful. Uh, unfortunately, most people didn't. Uh, Matt Connerton's smooth jazz experience only lasted one episode, but I'm glad you enjoyed it, uh, Brooklyn Mike. I uh, totally loved it. I think it could be a thing if you know what I mean. I do. All right, guys, I'll let you go. Everybody, have a great night. We'll All right, you Brooklyn soon. Mike. Thanks, Bye-bye. Brooklyn Mike. Bye bye. Brooklyn Mike. Always nice to hear from Brooklyn Mike. And, of course, uh, the morning show uh, tomorrow morning. What, what do you have going on tomorrow morning, uh, Peter? Well, we got Scumpy's game tomorrow. 
Oh, nice. uh, I was at the eight o'clock hour. We Which have, is older, Bobby Sherman or Cheerios? We have uh, <laughs> Matt. Matt Cush- Bobby Sherman. We I have, just saw him on the monkeys because you guys talked about the monkeys. We have Matt Cushane coming in to hang out with us. Polly C in the place to be will be there, mm-hmm. and uh, Daryl Dion also at the desk. Oh, Love Daryl, very nice. What about Easy G? No, we're not seeing Easy till Friday. That's what I'm hearing. All right. Well, very good. So uh, check that out. The Morning Show, weekdays 7 to 9 a.m. with a replay from 2 to 4 p.m. right before this program. And uh, if you miss any of the shows, you can get the archives at WMNHradio.org. Well, thank you all. This has been wonderful. You're welcome. A a wonderful time. An action-packed program today as we hear some smooth jazz in the background for uh, the great Brooklyn Mike. All right. Bye, everybody. (laughs) Just the book. Brooklyn's in the house. (laughs)